Here, I'll uh, call the uh, planning board meeting to order for October 4th, 2023. Nice summer day. I don't think we'll be having another one uh, this year at all. <laughs> um, I want to bring to everyone's attention that this room has two exits. They're on the right-hand side of the audience. They're at the front <coughs> of the room and the back of the room. If we need to evacuate, wait for any reason, we ask you to proceed through the exit closest to you. Go outside. Don't come back into our fire officials if I have instructed us to do so. I'd like to ask everyone to please rise with pledge of allegiance to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, Ann is not going to be here tonight, uh, so I will appoint uh, Jason. You haven't, uh, I don't think I've appointed you in a while. You vote for Ann. Sounds good. Okay. And uh, we have uh, six, seven, eight, eight members, and uh, it's a quorum, uh, or actually more than a quorum, and we can proceed with our meeting tonight. Tonight, the uh, first part, we have administrative board work where we get our business done. The uh, second part of the meeting, we have a uh, lot line adjustment plan. We have a uh, site plan and uh, a hearing on a conditional use permit. And then the uh, last item on the agenda is the uh, CIP uh, public hearing. And I was going to ask if anyone is here for the uh, CIP, uh, just raise your hand, please. I was expecting a, a good number of people, and I don't see anyone. So we will uh, tackle the agenda from the uh, way we have it uh, set up. If a lot of people were here for the CIP, I would have taken that first. So uh, first part of the meeting is administrative <coughs> board work. We have approval of minutes. Uh, the minutes of uh, September 6th and September 13th, we will do those next week at our meeting on the 11th. And regional impact determinations, uh, the, the, I think the lot line adjustment is the item on the, uh, the you're on the floor, Kelly. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you're correct. The regional impact determination for this evening is relating to the lot line adjustment, which is item A under new plans for this evening. And staff is recommending that this is not of regional impact. Okay. The board has no questions. I'll take a motion to uh, signify that this is not a, a regional impact. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that this development does not meet the standards for regional impact. Second. A uh, motion by Al, second by Jake. Any discussion <coughs> by the board? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Abstentions, the chair votes affirmative. Motion carries. Uh, no, that's all we have for impact. Uh, Discussion of the town staff. Uh, I think you had uh, a couple of things there, Kelly. Uh, I have two items for you, Mr. Chair. The first is an extension request uh, relating to uh, the Wood Partners project. The board more uh, knows it as the Alta Woodmont project, specifically the site plan. Uh, they're requesting a 75 day extension, which brings the date to December 19th, 2023. Okay. And uh, their reason? Uh, they're continuing to seek out their their final permitting um, with the state and uh, I believe the uh, sewer discharge permit. Correct. Uh, so that is taking some additional time. So they're just working through those last few items. Okay. Uh, board have any questions? If not, I'll take a motion that we extend the. Uh, Wood Partners to the 19th of December. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion by Al, second by Jake. Any discussion by the board? Seeing none, all those in favor, say divide by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Abstentions, uh, share what's affirmative. And uh, motion carries. And an ex extension request has been granted to the 19th of December, 2023. Uh, anything else, Kelly? One more item for you, Mr. Chair. Um, the planning department was contacted by a, a engineer who's doing work in Derry um, on Jefferson Street. This is in close proximity to um, Hillside, at, um, which is in London Derry. The Derry portion um, of this area is um, being proposed for a three lot subdivision. 
the uh, what I have up on the screen is the subdivision plan. You'll see that the town line runs right through one of the parcels um, as part of the dairy subdivision plan. Uh, this is an awareness item for the planning board. Uh, there is no <coughs> impact to the town of Lenadary land. Um, there is no proposed disturbance or structure or um, cutting or anything of that nature relating so to this project. This is just me bringing it to the board's attention that that's what's going on there's, there's over there. Nothing <coughs> that Lenadary uh, has to do for this. Correct. Okay. Any questions from the board? Nope, we're all set. <coughs> and anything from the board? I just wanted to mention that on the uh, 14th of October at uh, 10 a.m. Uh, right here, 10 to noon, is a listening session in regards to the, uh, the old town hall. So uh, anyone who wants to come certainly can, and uh, I'm sure you'll be entertained. I don't think there's any refreshments. <laughs> okay, we'll get into our new plans. Uh, we have a public hearing on an application for a formal review of a lot line adjustment uh, to address the lot lines of tax map 17, lot 5-5, five, five, 5 Kitty Hawk Landing, tax map 17, lot 11, uh, 595 Mammoth Road, tax map 17, lot 13, 603 Mammoth Road, Zone Industrial 1, uh, Agricultural Residential uh, AR1, and Commercial 2, C2, Londonary Holdings, LLC, and Tebow Corporation of New Hampshire, and Tebow Corporation of New England are the owners, and Ken Selinski is the applicant. And uh, what we need to do uh, first is uh, see if the plan is complete. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, there are uh, eight outstanding checklist items which are as follows. The applicant, item number one, applicant did not provide the owner's address in the title block per section 402E of the regs and item 32E of the checklist. Item number two, the applicant did not provide the applicant's address in the title block uh, per section 402J of the regs and item 32J of the checklist. In addition, the cover sheet identifies a different applicant's name and in general information uh, than noted in the title block. Item three, the applicant's submission does not include the proper notes on the plans for the proposed lot areas, existing and proposed use, sanitary sewer service, uh, water supply source, zoning variances, and note identifying which plans are to be reported per sections 411C, 411F, 411G, H, I, and O of the regulations and items 37C, F, G, H, I and N of the checklist. Item four, the applicant submission did not include the owner's signature per the regulations and item uh, 327 of the checklist. Item five, the applicant submission did not include all required setbacks, including applicable buffers for the subject lots per section 412 C18 of the regs and item 328 of the checklist. Item six, the applicant submission did not include the location of existing overhead <coughs> utility lines for section 305 and 412 C22 of the regs and item 331 of the checklist. <coughs> item seven, the applicant's submission did not include tax map sketch showing the proposed lot configuration at a scale of one inch equals 400 feet per section 415 <coughs> of the regs and item 38 of the checklist. Lastly, the applicant's submission did not include the proposed driveways to serve vacant lots 5, 5, and 11 uh, lot per sections 309B and 309F of the regs in item 334 of the checklist, including a driveway site distance plan for each existing and proposed driveway uh, per exhibit D3 of the regulations. Uh, I'm just going to chime in for one sec. Yep. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, I just wanted to point out that we did receive a waiver request from the applicant uh, this afternoon, and that's specific to. Um, item number eight on the staff memo uh, relating to the site distance uh, plan for the existing and proposed um, driveways. Um, I note that uh, for the board because this waiver um, is, the, the request is to waive it in its entirety, not just for acceptance purposes only. So I just wanted to make that clear for the board. So that would have to be taken 
Separate. separately. Yeah, I was right. going to say that would be taken separately if we accept the application. Correct. correct? Yes. <coughs> Um, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll go through the board anyway for uh, w with questions for uh, for staff. I think uh, it's something we're going to have to think about a little bit. So, questions, staff. So I'll start with Ted. I was going to say you can start with Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ted is a much better choice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be a long night. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> I didn't bring my sleeping bag. <laughs> Mr. Chair, uh, I'd be more than happy to start. Okay, Nick will start. <laughs> Since so. none of the end, I gotta start sitting on the end again. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd be comfortable um, uh, waiving these for acceptance purposes right now um, so we can hear what the applicant has to say. Um, I do have a question for TF Moran guys do a lot of work in London area. you got eight outstanding checklist items. I am aware, sir. Certainly not your first day at our planning board, correct? No, it is, no, it is not, sir. <laughs> All right. I think that there's probably a, a reason behind it. So yeah. the only way we're going to find out is to accept it for, uh, you know, uh, accept it for acceptance purposes only. Uh, but I'll go through the board first to get to, uh, uh, I'll come back to you, Ted. Uh, uh, certainly. Um, I have no major issue with accepting it right now as we've accepted other plans that are just lot line adjustments um, that were uh, simple lot line adjustments. Yeah, it's not the first time we've uh, run no. into this. Yeah, Tony. and I would be comfortable with that as well. Okay, Jenny. Yeah, me too. Okay, Jeff. I agree. <coughs> I would definitely be comfortable with okay. accepting Lynn. Yeah, my, I concur as well. Okay. Al? I'd go for uh, waiving his acceptance only. Okay, and uh, we know where Jake is, so. Uh, Roger. I just have one question. You said there was one that we should be, one item we should be list separating. Is that correct? That uh, would be an additional waiver if we, if you, accept if we, we accept it, the application. We can handle it there. Okay. okay. I agree. <laughs> okay. Jason. I agree as well. Okay. Uh, I will take a uh, motion then uh, that uh, we accept the uh well, we'll Mr. Do one, one, one through eight. We'll set waivers one through okay. eight for um, you know acceptance only. Acceptance only. So moved, Mr. Chair. Okay. Second. <laughs> Motion by Jake. Second by Al. Any discussion uh, by the board? I think I actually seconded it, not Al. Correct? Or did Al actually say second? Al seconded. You did? Yeah. Okay. We're yeah. good. Yeah. So motions uh, made and seconded. Uh, any discussion by the board? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Abstentions? She votes affirmative. The uh, motion of uh, accepting those waivers for acceptance purposes only carries. And uh, we can now make a motion for uh, completeness. Mm, so yeah, so, so the application is complete because yeah. we accept it. I'll, I'll, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Uh, second by Jake for completeness. Uh, I mean, motion by Jake for co completeness. Second by Al. Any discussion by the board? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Abstentions. And chair was affirmative. Motion is accepted as complete. And uh, we can proceed with the presentations. Uh, we'll proceed with the public hearing. And also, it starts a 65 day time frame in which this board has to render a decision. Question, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with respect to the waivers, do we have to uh, say the reason A, B, or C? Uh, it would be uh, it would be good. Uh, okay, because you can am uh, amend the motion. So um, actually, if it's just for acceptance at this time, you're fine to proceed. Yeah, in waivers. Think that's okay. Uh, Correct, because if it's for acceptance only, ultimately they will be fulfilled as a condition of approval. We'll have to accept them once we've uh, had Sounds the, good. the hearing. Sounds good. So. Yeah. Gentlemen, Thank you, Mr. Place. Chair. Dick Anagnos, developer here on behalf of the applicant. To my left is esteemed Nick Golan from TF Moran. Um, without further ado, I'll let Nick take on the technical side of this because he's much more <laughs> adept at this part of it than I am. Thank you, Dick. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, this is rather, rather technical anyway. So. All right. 
Um, what you have before you is an industrial subdivision of three existing lots. Um, tax map 17 lot 55, five, it's currently 26.5 acres. We're looking to increase that to 46.3. And how we're doing that is we are pulling from lot 11 and lot 13, which are, mo which are located immediately to the east of the subject property. Um, you probably recognize these parcels. Uh, these are part of a larger planned development uh, that we hope to be bringing before the planning board very soon um, in an effort to acquire the necessary acreage for the project to move forward. Um, this approximately 20 acres is being added to this subject lot, which would then in the future be consolidated with other lots that are in common ownership. So I think it might be helpful just to hear that backstory. And part of that is also the reason for what I'll say is an abundance of checklist items in that our plan set was set up very much for that large master development. And many of the items relative to how these lots exist today were inadvertently not included on the original submittal. Um, I didn't, although technically they are missing, um, I don't believe there are any items that are on there that would preclude our opportunity to move forward with the sites. Um, we are talking about some larger areas. There's no margin really here for error. Um, so I'm gonna be fairly succinct with our presentation. This is a, an industrial lot line adjustment. Again, to accommodate a future development, you do have two waivers before you, uh, one of which is in regards to show wetlands just in the area of development. It's a fairly typical one, I believe, that's come before this board in the past. If for some reason they were to develop other portions of those lots that are to remain, they would obviously be required to locate wetlands at that time as part of that permit approval. Uh, the second one, this one kind of harkens back to, I think, a, a lot line adjustment for another industrial subdivision you looked at recently. Um, being that this is gonna be part of a future development, our access is not going to be from Mammoth Road or the portions of Akira Way in which we currently have frontage. Um, I believe this board's actually seen a, a, a master plan in which how we would be accomplishing access to these properties. Can I give you a placeholder drawing that shows how it could be accomplished? Sure, but I'm not sure what purpose that would serve. Um, so what we're asking for is not necessarily not to provide these, this item, but to defer that to be part of a site plan approval. So. Relative to that waiver request, there are a total of three items, all of which are in relationship to site distance. Um, as are part of any typical, say, residential subdivision, you always need to see where that road is, where your access is, and what your sight lines are. Um, in that there's already established access to all of these properties, and that the subject lot um, 1755 would be part of a future development. We would like to show the access at this time. Now, if for some reason the board thinks that that's not the most appropriate use, um, the reason we came about this, and it was just as recent as today, is just reading through the regulations, uh, we feel this alternative approach meets the design objectives as stated in the regulations equally or better than with compliance with the regulations. Again, can I give you a placeholder of what it could be? Yeah, I could, but it, it well, obviously wouldn't well, be the final design. Yeah, yeah we, we, we don't know what the final design is gonna be, and I think anything um, that, that's talked now would be speculation, so that is fair. we have nothing there's nothing concrete there. We would have to have something concrete to work on. Okay. So we won't speculate. Understood. Because it could change totally in, the, in a month or two months or what, whatever. Yeah. Very good, sir. And, it, and again, should it be the board's pleasure that I, they don't think that's appropriate, that it doesn't meet the justification for a waiver? Um, we'll just resubmit a and provide the information. Adjustment, so yep. Let's keep it simple. Yes, sir. So I will stop there since this is, there's not really a lot for me to talk about. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, uh, we'll go to staff. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, there are uh, design review items. Item number two, sheet one of eight, includes a subdivision of a lot upon a budding lot 2829 to create a new lot 2929 that is not identified in the application submission. We note that the proposed subdivision lot line adjustment designed for new lot 2829 does not appear to comply with section 4413B of the, regula of the zoning ordinance. In section 305A <coughs> of the subdivision regulations, since it does not have frontage on a class five or better roadway with the minimum required 150 feet of frontage. Item three, the applicant submittal does not include topographic information for lot 55 per section 417 of the regs. We're requesting that they update the planes accordingly. Item four, 
we're requesting that they provide the proper monumentation of all property lot angle points. We're also asking that they locate the, uh, indicate the location of abutting lot 720-0 on the plan in accordance with the regs. Also label the status class of the roadways. Item D is to provide the existing information per section 417-827 of the regs as it relates to the culverts along Mammoth Road. Sheet seven indicates two separate culverts under Mammoth Road with one shown upon lot 713. Uh, typically, we do request drainage easements be provided on those existing salt, those existing culverts uh, to allow for proper maintenance to occur. We're requesting those uh, easements be granted. Item F, we're in, uh, please indicate to clarify the entire zoning line on sheets 2, 4, 6, 7, and 8 of the plan set in accordance with the regs. Item G, to confirm the proposed lot number designation and addresses with the, uh, with the assessor. Item H, uh, on sheet one of the plan set, identifies abutting lots 29.3 and 29.5 as abutters to lot 2829-6 that are not shown on the current tax map in the GIS map. Please clarify and verify that these lots actually exist. Item I, it's unknown if the existing abutting, uh, excuse me, if the existing building on lot 1713 is serviced by septic and well. Please provide the update on the plan set. Item J, plans do not indicate or label the location of the minimum 14 benchmarks needed to provide the minimum of one per five acres as required uh, by the regulations. Lastly, item number five is to verify the DRC comments uh, for the project are adequately addressed. From uh, Public Works uh, Engineering, uh, I disagree with the, uh, I don't support the waiver request for the request for the driveway sight line. <clears throat> Again, they're creating a new lot. It's always been the practice to, to show that the proper sight distance can be achieved on that lot. Although they're not doing anything, it's just like when they do <laughs> lot sizing calculations, they prove that that lot exists, that it has the area that's required to support a lot. So that's, the requi that's why we ask for the sight distance. That's all I have. Okay, thanks, Joy. Kelly. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I thought it would be helpful if I just elaborate a little bit further, uh, I guess, visually. Yeah, it's specific probably would to, be um, <coughs> what's, what's being done Yeah, visually. specific to item um, two in the design review uh, comments and item uh, 4H. <coughs> uh, so the parcel that uh, the comment is relating to is, is this parcel right here. Um, this is a, a result of uh, subdivision, um, you might recall, Mr. Chairman, Hilltop subdivision, which was, I think, approved back in 1998. Um, yes, yeah, it's just <laughs> back a ways. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a vague, vague memory, but I remember uh, what I recall. There was considerable discussion about it. At right. That time. So uh, I'll try and be uh, as brief as possible. But essentially, that subdivision was two phased. Only phase one was approved. Uh, phase two included uh, essentially dividing up uh, and creating this parcel. Phase two did not actually occur from a legal standpoint. The town does not recognize this as it's drawn on the lot line adjustment plan as an actual parcel. The town recognizes this as the legal parcel. So that in short is the comment and concern that this is the parcel that should be shown on the lot line adjustment plan before you, uh, not uh, this layout as shown. Um, okay. This isn't a recognized lot is essentially what the comment is saying. And that is that is true. It is not a recognized lot in this form that is, is drawn on this law and adjustment plan. So the expectation is that be corrected and fixed um, before a final approval of this plan. Would reflect what is in our GIS system, Would reflect correct? That's right. That right there. Okay. If I can offer, Mr. Chairman um, and Kelly, yes, um, it's kind yeah. of a, an oddity of timing, and that there was also supposed to be another application before you this evening, which was the subdivision of that lot, whereby the applicant would be acquiring a portion, um, which would be the portion that's identified on our plan. We have since withdrawn that application because they're now purchasing the lot in its entirety. So we had a unfortunate timing event of one application pending another application made 
and then that app prior application was pulled. So this plan unfortunately reflects dated information. So we acknowledge everything that's been said and we'll update the plan accordingly. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to make sure that I made mention that it was somewhat a matter of timing where we had intended to subdivide that lot when this application was submitted, but then no longer had to as we're now purchasing that lot in its entirety. So our apologies for that confusion. Okay, so then the correction will be made. Yes, yes sir. Uh, lastly, Mr. Chairman, um, planning staff does support the waiver as it relates to the delineation of wetlands on the entirety of the site. We are supportive of waiving that that requirement. And you support waivers one through eight uh, was we waived for acceptance purposes only. Um, are you asking no, about I, the? No, I uh, believe the only one they asked for a waiver on was yeah. number eight. Was the, it the, not one eight. through yeah, eight. I'm looking but once we get into uh, what to do with the waivers, whether to, uh, to grant them or not. So the board will need to act. If you're choosing to move forward, you'll need to act on two waivers specific to site distance and specific to the oh. wetland delineation. And you'll need to provide your justification <coughs> um, if you're choosing to act on those this evening. Mr. Chair, I'd also offer, if there's a concern, which I've heard relative to that waiver request, to not provide that element, that being those site distance profiles, we have no issue with withdrawing that request. We thought it was the most intelligent way to address it, given that we were planning on our access from a different location. Um, hearing what we've heard tonight, that that is speculation relative to that future project, it sounds as it would be most appropriate to withdraw that waiver request, and that information will be provided as hopefully a condition of this project. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll go through the board now because that's the way we uh, do our public hearings: is the uh, the, pre the presentation or with the site plan or, or subdivision. Uh, we have to have uh, completeness before we start, <coughs> and then staff has its input, the board has input, its input, and then the public has its input. Uh, one exception is the board can ask questions at any time. So, uh, I'll start with Jason. Um, very little time there, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it sounds to me like there's just way too much that's not ready on this quite yet to to really um, to 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 really be able to you know make any kind of a decision. We, we can't speculate on what's going to happen because we don't know. <laughs> e e exactly. There's, there's way you too many unknowns. Look at this as just a, a lot line adjustment. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my thought. Roger. I think I agree with my colleague. <laughs> but, uh, are we putting anything that can't be changed <coughs> down today? Are we uh, too much that is not? I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if there are any problems, we we definitely hear from from uh, staff. So. Yeah, so if it, it, I might have missed that. Is staff saying yes, we should approve or no? Do the staff memo. Staff has recommended a continuance. <coughs> okay, that, that's what I'm going with. Yep. yep. Jake. Uh, so I'm looking at a lot of the design review items here. Um, the only one that really does stand out is is number two, which which Kelly touched on, um, and is is seems like it's well explained. Um, I I don't see a problem with um, moving forward with this so long as the conditions of approval are there and appropriate, and that um, you know all these design review items are essentially a condition of approval. Um, there's a lot of stuff on here to me that's um, seems kind of like uh, house housekeeping items. You know, please label the status class of the roadway for section four, blah 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 blah, so on and so forth. A lot of it seems um, very housekeeping in nature. Um, the one that does stick out to me is section two, but I understand what what's been discussed, and I would be I I think I'd be comfortable making a decision on it tonight based off of what I've heard and knowing that it would be set as a, a condition of approval that it gets adjusted to what it actually needs to reflect, not what's currently on their, on their uh, plan. 
Okay. Al? Uh, at this time, I'd be uh, more comfortable continuing it. Okay. <clears throat> so somewhere along the way, I got lost. Could you go back to sheet one, Kelly? And we've got three Thank parcels. You. Thank you, Wynn. Oh. <laughs> we've got three parcels that are hash marked. Uh, what is the lot line adjustment, and how does it affect those three, those three do you, parcels? Nick, do you have the uh, highlight, the pointer? Yes. Do you want to yeah, right. get home with it? Yeah, as long as I can. You should have control. <coughs> right, is there a center box? Not as familiar with this one. Does this have a, there we go. Okay, relative to. Oh, can you do it off the of sheet one, so I can see the big yeah, picture? Yeah, even better. <clears throat> I want to see I the big this picture. Was... Sure. So, relative to the application that's before you, um, we are talking about three these three hatched lots. Yep. Um, the discussion of that that other lot that needs to be reshown is actually over here. Um, that was a lot that was just shown as reference because um, it was an abutter to the project. So, what we're doing is we're taking. Uh, a little less than 20 acres from these two lots, the very back portions, and then going to consolidate them with the lot that is immediately adjacent. And, yeah, and that the is the revised proposal. lot lines reflected in the drawing package you have here. Yes, the correct <laughs> correct lot lines are all reflected in the package. Uh, the anomaly is in a an abutting lot. Okay, I got lost with the discussion on the abutting lot. So, yeah. so which so, lot lines are going away? Um, the lot line that would be removed is this line right here. Essentially what we're doing is we're moving <coughs> it back about six, 800 feet so that we can acquire these 20 acres and then consolidate. So this is the lot line that is being modified. Okay. What, 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 go, what happens to the lot line that's going, I don't know what you would call line? that, at a- West to east. Yep. So what we're doing essentially is we're taking this line and just scooting it back and then redrawing it right here. Okay. okay. So the, can you highlight the incorrect lots on your, so they're really, they are just in a butter to this and don't have. They uh, don't have a bearing on the actual. They don't proposal. have any actual effect to what you're doing. It's just an improper drawing. Yeah, the, the reference shown is out Correct. of date. Yes, sir. Correct. Now, if you guys were to sign that plan, that would create a, a, a non-conforming lot. Correct. So. But obviously, as a condition of approval, they'd have to adjust it to be Correct. appropriate. Yep. And <clears throat> the purpose of this is to get the required number of acreage to go in for the mm -hmm. master mini site plan, master plan, what, yes, sir. whatever the appropriate terminology PD. is. And that remaining lot, John, your concern, sorry, uh, but your concern is that it's creating a non conforming lot? No, again, my concern is making sure they have sight distance onto Mammoth Road. Looks like they got a lot of frontage on Mammoth Road there. <clears throat> yep. So show that you have the sight distance. Okay. So sight distance from 1713? Uh, no, what is it, 1711. Oh. 1713 has got an existing. Correct. Yeah, yep. So that's an existing lot, so why would, so why would sight distance be con a concern there. I know we're creating a new lot, but I mean it's existing conditions, right? Yeah. Now is now is the time to check it. No, when? Okay. But, but it is existing conditions. So. Yeah. What's the required <coughs> site distance? Do you know? No. Again, I I believe this is AR1. Yep. Two hundred and fifty feet of site distance. So say you didn't. So if it was. If it wasn't changed, it'd be a lot of record and you could develop it. But you're creating a new lot because you're moving the lot line back and now you get your crack it saying whether or not it's got proper sight distance. Correct. It's a safety thing, Johnny. Did I get that? Yep. Yeah. Am, am I reading this right? So you, what, what, what did you say, 250 feet? 250, yeah. 250. Am I reading that right, that if I measure it, there's about seven, almost 800 feet of lot line there. So are you looking at you're looking at two dimensional, so three yeah. dimensional. Okay. What's what's out there? What's actually what's yeah. actually out yeah. there? Could be. Sure. Yeah. Yep. You got it. It's relatively flat. It's an uphill grade. Yeah, it just goes it's like this. Flat. Yeah. Or downhill, it's depending on which way you drive. <coughs> I always go up. <laughs> I'm on a bicycle. It's always up. But the yeah. thing is, is that if they were to go in and pull a, a building permit on that lot right now, regardless of whether or not it meets <coughs> sight distance, they could do it. 
and they could build something on it. They would have to meet site distance. No, not if it's a pre, not if it's a lot of record. I don't think it has an existing driveway right now. Um, yeah, but you could build a, a house on it. That's a little bit further down, but they do all have existing driveways. You could build a house on it. There's a building on you, it. You'd still need to, to provide sight distance, Johnny. Uh, so you would, what would that be then, a taking? Because you can't... Wouldn't be a taking. You'd prove that you have the sight distance, just like Nick is going to do. Well, I don't think... What happens if you don't? It's an existing lot. What happens if you don't? Can't, you can't build And you can't build? But I don't Again, then, right. then we then we have to look at it closer, Tony. Okay. Could I could I just clarify something? So, th did you actually withdraw the waiver? <laughs> okay. Um, just <laughs> hearing the initial sentiment and the concern, we're just going to withdraw that waiver okay. relative to site distance. Let's simplify things. This is a <coughs> simple industrial lot line adjustment, as was mentioned. I think it would, Let so me make the talk of site distance. Let me make we should not be is a moot about point. <coughs> Yeah, we don't want to get bogged down to that. Right. That's for a future discussion or whatever could could happen. So please consider that waiver. Anything rumors. else, Lynn? So uh, I'm gonna. I would like if you could come back to me. I want to review the plans because I didn't understand that that's what the whole discussion was about. I got yeah, sidetracked with it. where you were going with that other lot, and and that wasn't pertinent in my mind to the discussion. So, so if you can come back to me and a after uh, Ted, yeah, I'll let you know. I will. Great, thanks. Okay, Jeff. Um. I'm okay right now, Mr. Chair. Okay. Anything else, uh, Johnny? Yeah, I mean, so <clears throat> if you came back, what progress would you make by moving this lot line right now versus just coming back with all the conditions and things? Um, the so what, what would it enable you to do? Um, we've already up begun our updates to the plan. We expect it to be done by the end of the week. Um, the only thing that was outstanding is the site distance element, which will take a little bit more time. Um, it does affect the ability to close on properties. Um, so that's the element of importance for us here is the ability to close swiftly on the property. <coughs> yeah, okay. Uh, uh, I'm all set. Okay. Tony. Um, so I'm, I'm glad Lynn spearheaded the campaign here because I had absolutely no idea what was going on uh, in the presentation. I couldn't follow it. Um, usually I'm pretty on top of, but you guys did a great job of really confusing um, what's really a very simple thing, I know now. Um, I, I'm a little bit concerned about the cart before the horse or the horse before the cart or the cart has no horse um, but I can be convinced um, that's all I have okay Ted I think we've heard everything at this point I'm all set okay. <clears throat> so I, I, I think I'm going to defer to staff's recommendation to continue this when we get to it well, just based so. on what I've heard and what I see okay Anything else from the board? Uh, what I'm do, I'll go to the public, uh, see if there's any abutters or any uh, interested uh, citizen have any questions, comments, concerns about this uh, lot line adjustment. And just please come to the microphone, please, and uh, name and address, please. Hi, I'm Caroline Schultz, um, co-owner of lot 1710. Um, which is, well, you could see it on the map there. Um, so the amount of land that's being conveyed is 19 acres, and I was wondering if that was the final could, could piece. Could you speak up a little bit, please? I was wondering if the 19 acres that were being conveyed was the final piece that needed to um, be acquired to have the 100 acres for the PUD. That, Are you guys uh, at 100 acres? <coughs> Yeah, we, we don't know the answer to that. I don't know if you just... We'll not only be acquiring that 19, we'll be acquiring the lower piece and we'll be in, in excess of 100 acres. So you're almost there. <laughs> well, we're over it by over quite a it. bit. I think it's going to be anywhere between 110 and 117. Okay. It seems like the planning board doesn't have an issue with this whole concept of the PUD. And, um, you know, I, I can't make it happen or not happen, but... Is that true? Everybody's like excited about this project and wants it to move forward. 
you know, we don't know what's really going to happen, and I think it's still in, in the planning process yeah. with the uh, the applicant. So because now, um, I, because I the zone, zoning kind of flies out the window when you have a, a PUD, mm -hmm. and I know um, they were <coughs> denied some zoning variances in the past for trying to build um, residential prop, you know, buildings on industrial land or whatever it all was. What's well, in front of us now, Mr. Chair, is not a PUD, correct? It's just a lot right. No, this right. is not a PUD. I think uh, it probably has been discussed with some people, but not with us. Uh, we don't know if that is really what, what will be happening. Okay. Un until they present us with a, uh, a plan. Okay. It's just now the project is getting so much bigger that it's rolling up behind our house <laughs> where it hadn't been before. So it's a little concerning, and um, we'll keep our eye on the project to see what they plan to do with that um, land they're acquiring now through the slot line adjustment because it is very close to our house. Yeah. Yes. You can always check in with staff also. We, we're, we keep our ear to the ground of what's, what's happening, but uh, we can't form any <laughs> reformed opinions because uh, at this point anyway. We just don't know. We don't know when the hurricane's coming, but it's coming. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, anyone else? Bob, come to the microphone, please. Just uh, need, need name and address, even though I know yeah. you. But Bob Mill, 569 Mammoth Road. Um, one thought I'd had is that probably this is the very beginning part, and at some point, I think we should have a uh, work. Um, Planning board workshop with other boards, uh, conservation, heritage, school, and of uh, course staff members like uh, public works and various other departments, school, and uh, work on uh, trying to see how this project is going to look and uh, you know the whole business. And the other thing is, uh, think about uh, a site walk at some point. Uh, we could probably, if the school was going to co uh, cooperate, we could probably use the school board, I mean, superintendent office uh, parking lot, maybe some Saturday morning, and take a site walk up there, you know, member of the planning board and other boards, and staff members and try to get a better sense of the lay of the land. Uh, it's just my thought at this point, and thank you for your time and consideration. Hey, you're, you're welcome. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep it in mind anyway. Anyone right. else? I do not see anyone else. Uh, we will close the public session and bring it back to the board for uh, Discussion and uh, decision making. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to continue the lot line adjustment to adjust the lot lines <coughs> of map 17, lot 5 5, 5 Kitty Hawk Landing, map 17, lot 11, 595 Mammoth Road, map 17, lot 13, 603 Mammoth Road, zone industrial 1, agricultural res uh, residential AR1 and commercial 2, Leonardary Holdings <coughs> LLC and Tebow Corporation of New, of New Hampshire. And Tebow Corporation of New England owners and Ken Zelinsky applicant to November 8th, 2023. Second that. Motion by Al, second by Lynn. Any discussion on the continuance by the board? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Abstentions, share with affirmative. Motion carries, and uh, this is continued to the uh, 8th of November, 2023. And that is your only public notice. So remember the 8th of November, 7 p.m. right here. Thank you, Mr. Chair and board for your time. Okay, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, next we have is a public hearing on an application for a formal review of a site plan for the construction of a proposed 3,116-square-foot bank with drive through associated parking and site improvements. 66 Gilchrist Road, tax map 7, lot 66, this is on commercial 1. Chase Bank is the applicant, and Gilchrist Road Realty Trust is the owner. 
and we need to determine uh, the completeness. So I'll go to John. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, there are no outstanding checklist items. Staff recommends that the board vote to accept the application as it is substantially complete and contains sufficient information to invoke the board's jurisdiction to allow and to allow the board to make an informed decision. So move, Mr. Chairman. Okay, motion by Al for completeness. Second. Second by Jake. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, see by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Abstentious, she votes affirmative, and the motion uh, carries, and the plan is accepted as complete. This starts the, uh, the public <coughs> hearing, starts the presentation, and it starts the 65-day time frame in which we have to render a decision. So uh, just identify yourselves for our records, to, please, gentlemen. Hi, folks. Uh, Randy Myron with Bowler here on behalf of the applicant. Also with me is Kevin Kelly with Core Stays Group, the project architect. Welcome. So thank you. Uh, yeah, so this is the for the uh, the Chase Bank site plan review application at 66 Gilcrest Road. Uh, and just to give you folks a little bit of history, we have previously met with the Heritage Commission uh, a couple of times, and um, they have recommended approval of the project. Uh, and I'll show you certainly the building elevations and the landscape plan. Uh, but we were before them, and we've also been before the um, the Conservation Commission, who also uh, has recommended approval here. Uh, but it's 66 Gilcrest Road. It's the existing Remax building. It's a um, uh, like a 55,000 square foot lot with access off of uh, off of Gilcrest. Um, the um, uh, the proposed project, the site plan, is in front of you on the screen here. It's a uh, it's a 31. 3,116 square foot Chase Bank with a and, and it just a drive-through ATM kind of in the back or I guess page north side of the building uh, with 24 parking spaces uh, and there's the access continues to remain on on Gilcrest um, I know I'm working with John and the engineering team uh, we're basically tightening up that that access driveway so it's a little bit more safe than what it is today and trying to uh, we've also tried to align it with the um with the driveway on the other side of gilcrest uh but it's a two-way driveway again maintaining it, maintaining and improving it a little bit from what from what it is today uh and you know in addition to that we're really i'd say tightening up the entire project the entire limits of pavement that, that are out there today we're increasing all of those landscape buffers uh, from what they currently are to make them compliant with the regulations uh, so as a result of that there's a uh, there's actually a decrease in impervious surface uh, by around 10,000 square feet and again that's mainly because all the buffers are being increased uh, around the pavement limits um, you know, we're certainly we're reducing stormwater runoff rates, uh, stormwater runoff volumes. We are, I, I'd say, rebuilding that um, stormwater basin that's along Gilcrest. Uh, if folks recall, there's that there's that basin there. It's it, it's it's going to get rebuilt uh, and kind of expanded a little bit to comply with the regulations. <coughs> um, there's new underground utilities, new water, sewer, gas, uh, and electric services. Uh, there's new parking lot lights uh, for safety and security purposes, 20 foot high uh, sight lights, fully dark sky compliant, cut off fixtures, downward facing. Uh, we're minimizing the spillover onto the adjacent properties. And I believe there was a, um, there's a 0.2 foot candle uh, requirement that we are complying with as part of that. Uh, and we did provide a photometrics plan as part of the plan set. Uh, and of course, there's obviously new erosion and sediment controls around the limits of work to limit any sediment from being transported off site. Uh, and uh, there's some fresh new landscaping being proposed to. Can we flip to the landscape plan? Yep, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think in total there's, um, let's see, 19 trees, 96 shrubs, and there's uh, you know, uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, perennials. And I know one of the Heritage Commission's comments was to incorporate some purple lilacs. Uh, which we have done as part of the project. Um, and uh, that's kind of a high level overview of the site itself. I did want to also show you the, um, the building. If you can flip to the next one, Kelly, up. So this is the building here. Um, it's a mixture of uh, red brick and, and some clapboard siding. Uh, again, we did, um, we did meet with the Heritage Commission 
uh, and address their, some of their comments and concerns. I think initially it might have had, uh, I think we had a gray brick initially, but I know after some back and forth, we went with the, with, with the red. Uh, and the project architect, Kevin, uh, is sitting next to me here in case there is questions on this. Um, and then if we can just flip to the signage. The next ones, I just wanted to show you what, this is the, uh, there's, a, there's a, a monument sign that's being proposed out front. Uh, and what we've done is uh, match the, the brick on the base so it matches with the, with the building itself. Uh, I, th I think it looks kind of nice. Um, again, this was uh, based on some comments from the, from the Heritage, Heritage Commission. Uh, and then there's just a couple building signs that are also being proposed. One facing Gilcrest and another facing, this is the, so this is the one facing Nashua Road, uh, just an internally illuminated wall sign. And then there's another one facing um, Gilcrest. And that's it for wall signage. Other than that, there's just some, your typical directional signage uh, around the property. Um, and that's kind of a high level overview. I know we worked through some of the design review comments. Um, I think there's just a couple little outstanding comments that we did just receive a, a, a letter yesterday, uh, but very minor technical stuff uh, that we're happy to address. Um, other than that, that, that's kind of it. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll go to staff, I'll start with John. Uh, Randy, Randy summarized it pretty well. Again, in bottom line, the, the existing building goes away. The, the <coughs> pavement out there gets tightened up. Uh, the, the detention pond is reconstructed and the, uh, the entrance onto Gilcrest Road is narrowed up and again, more, more or, uh, directly across from um, the old 50 National Road. So Randy summarized it pretty well. Uh, we do have minor uh, design review items. The applicant should submit for and obtain all project permits, indicate the permit approval numbers on the, in the permit table on sheet C301. Provide copies of all permits for the planning, de planning department's files in accordance with the regs. Item two, we recommend that the applicant provide an, an insulated sewer pipe construction detail in the plan set for proper construction. Item three, we're requesting that they address uh, <coughs> items relative to the project drainage analysis. Item A, provide an updated and complete stormwater report that it incorporates the recently submitted 25-year design velocities of the proposed pipe network based upon the actual flows which demonstrate the minimum pipe velocities of two feet per second is achieved. Item B, we recommend the applicant incorporate the recently submitted uh, best management practice map in the project O&M and update the maintenance log form to specifically list each BMP in the report, similar to sheet C905 to ensure each one will be inspected as typically requested by the Department of Engineering and Environmental Services. Lastly is to update the DRC or verify the updated DRC comments for the project are adequately addressed with the assessing department and the fire department. That's all I have. Okay, thanks John. Billy. Mr. Chairman, I have no outstanding comments. Okay, uh, go to the board next. Uh, start with Ted. Uh, looks like a great plan. Um, I really don't have any big questions. <clears throat> um, I, it's a good-looking building. Um, I think it's a good plan. Um, is this building a little bit smaller than what's currently there? It is. Yeah, the existing building's around 5,700 square feet. This one's 3,100, just well, over that. 57, but it's two stories. Correct. Yes, yeah. is one story. So the dog houses are ceremonial. Ceremonial. Uh, I'm not the sure. Dog house dormers that you have on the building. Uh, yes, they are purely uh, decorative. Aesthetic. Decorative. Yes. Okay. Um, I like the muttons, mullions, <coughs> window dividers, w whatever you call them, this month. Um, so I hope those will stay true to the um, to these renderings. Um, I think it's a good look, and um, um, I look forward <coughs> to uh, having this site cleaned up with a good-looking building. So thank you, Kenny. Uh, any comments on the good-looking building? Like what? Yeah, yeah. I just want to echo kind of Tony's um, last response there regarding just cleaning up that area, um, particularly the that current parking lot. You know, there's a lot of water that does tend to kind of um, pool. So I <coughs> want to say that that you know, obviously 
as this plan kind of or as the plan gets built, I'm sure that's going to, it, that will be leveled, and um, I would imagine the retention pond probably is addressing that. I think so, yeah, and I can tell you that. I mean, the entire parking lot that exists today is going to get removed. It'll yeah. get, you know, it'll be a brand new parking lot with proper slopes. Everything will be pitched towards low points, catch basins, and in, into that basin that's being rebuilt. So yeah, it should be a big improvement over what's out there today. <coughs> no, it definitely looks good. Um, other than that, I think for the landscaping aspect of it, but I really have no. Good comments for that. Yeah, but yeah, no, good plan. <coughs> I like the design of the building. Good. No, I think it's going to be a good update to that corner. So, <laughs> yeah, looks good to me. Jake? Yeah, you know, uh, I believe you guys came to us conceptually, correct? You came to the board yes. conceptually, yeah. right? Um, when it first showed up, it was a kind of a dark building. Um, yep. Obviously, you took our, took our advice, cleaned it up, up a bit. I think it it's a nice looking building that'll add a lot to the corner there. Oh yes, you would be surprised. Roger. <laughs> it looks great to me. <laughs> Jason. Uh, very nice, I, I like the additional green space that will be there from what it is now. And again, with everybody else, it's vast improvement, so. Are there any abutters <coughs> to this uh, site plan or anyone from the public with any questions, comments, <coughs> or concerns for this board? I do not see anyone. Uh, we'll close the hearing. Bring it back to the uh, board for uh, discussion or. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to grant conditional approval of the site plan for the construction <coughs> of a proposed 3,116 square foot bank with drive through associated parking and site improvements, 66 Gilchrist Road, map 7, lot 66, zone commercial 1, Chase Bank, applicant and Gilchrist Road Realty Trust owner in accordance with plans prepared by Bowler Engineering, dated December 14, 2022, last revised July 13, 2023, with the precedent conditions to be fulfilled within 120 days of the approval and prior to plan signature in general and subsequent conditions of approval to be fulfilled as noted in the staff recommendation memorandum, dated October 4, 2023. Second. Motion by Al, I heard uh, Jason did the second. <laughs> it was a yeah, chorus I'm there. I, I gotta get chorus. <laughs> okay. Any discussions on the uh, on the motion? Seeing none. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Abstentions. You raise affirmative, and uh, you have a uh, conditionally approved site plan. Awesome. You're welcome, and it's a good addition to the community. So. Thank you. Mr. Chair, for this next item, I need to recuse myself. Oh, yes. <coughs> next, we have the public hearing on an application. Oh, uh, yes, Ted has recused himself. Uh, let the records show that. Uh, we have a public hearing on an application for a conditional use permit for 3,063 square feet of temporary wetland impact and 19,037 square feet of wetland buffer impact for equipment access, and this says word pad placement. So I don't know if that, uh, that's work pad placement, Replace I believe. With, the K, thank yeah. You. Yeah. <laughs> Within the conservation overlay district for the proposed replacement of existing structures along the existing 326, uh, <coughs> I don't know what the units are, uh, transmission line right away in the area of Dan Hill Road, Elwood Road, Severance Drive. Public Service Company of New Hampshire doing business as Eversource Energy is the owner and the applicant. And uh, we need to determine completeness first, so I'll go to John. Yeah, staff recommends it, uh, staff does recommend that the application be accepted as complete. Uh, so moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion by Al. <coughs> Second. Second by Jake for uh, completeness. Any discussion by the board? Seeing that all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Abstentions, you're affirmative. And also let the record show uh, Ted has uh, stepped down from, uh, from this. Uh, Just one point of clarification before we proceed with the, the wording in that. 
Oh, yes. <clears throat> so I just want to confirm that uh, the wetland buffer impact is temporary as well. We It could be read either way. Yeah, um, we were proposing for impact in the wetland buffer. Is it temporary or is it permanent? It would. Did you have something? Um, I w we were not intending for it to be temporary, but it's definitely it's something both. that we can. There's a temporary impact and there's a permanent impact. Okay. That's why they're separated. Okay, good to know. Okay, Thank so you. Temporary is temporary, and then the other is permanent. Temporary is temporary, and permanent is permanent. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly, yeah. for that clarification. <laughs> I just want to make sure we all understand. Fantastic. The one identified as temporary is temporary. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one is half and half. It's, it's not temporary. <laughs> Can I uh, uh, make a comment, though? Uh, yeah. uh, I'm assuming that these are larger structures than that are existing there. Correct? Yep, that'll be part of my, it'll be about five to 10 feet taller just for electrical okay. standards. So are, are you looking for more of the permanent impact because the base is wider? Uh, the or permanent, right away? For the, it would be permanent impact just for the wetland buffer um, for access roads or work areas so we can go in the future. Okay, okay so, 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 so we have a complete application Starts the 365, I mean, 65 day time frame. Emergency board has to write a decision. It also starts the presentation of the public hearing. Yeah. So, identify yourself for our records, please, gentlemen, and uh, we'll proceed. Sure thing. Um, my name is Connor Madison. I'm from GZA Geo Environmental, and this is Travis Yandel of Eversource Environmental Licensing and Permitting. We also have Ed Kisner and Jordan McCausley from our project services team. They're sitting back there for support needed. Okay. But I think I will take charge of the little spiel. Um, feel free to interrupt at any point if you have questions. I know this board never takes me up on that, but we are here for a conditional use permit application for temporary wetland impacts and permanent wetland buffer impacts um, on the 326 transmission line, which is a 345 kV line. We are proposing to replace a total of 11 utility structures throughout the town of Londonderry. Um, I have them listed out off of Wyla Hill Road, Elwood Road, and Dan Hill Road. Um, I know you did say severance, but I don't believe I had that in mind, but okay. we can discuss that as well. This is similar work to what we have seen in the past. Every year, Eversource goes out and inspects every single one of their lines. Um, this is a wood pole to steel pole structure replacement. The wood poles are deteriorating from water or cracks, woodpecker hill holes. Um, we're not replacing any lines, adding in any new lines, or clearing any trees for this work. Um, this is just structure and structure. These will be about five to 10 feet higher than the old poles due to new electrical standards. I believe this line was installed. I have the 50s, but I truthfully haven't double checked that one, but we do have new electrical standards um, today. Like similar projects, we will be abiding by 2019 Best Management Practice Manual. That means clean timber matting in all the wetlands, silt sock, silt fence at all the wetland crossings, GZA is contracted to be out there weekly to make sure that all these erosion controls are functioning properly. As for permitting, I'll just give a quick, little quick background here. We do have federal permitting, so that is a construction general permit application. We also have state permitting, so we have all of our upland disturbances are permitted by an alteration of terrain permit. Uh, the town should have received both the application and the approval for that one, so we do have approval for the upland disturbances. As for wetland disturbances, we also have a statutory permit by notification. The town has been CC'd on the application, and I believe we are hearing back from the state. I know we just talked to them today. Um, so we are pending approval. The town will see that approval as well. Both of those applications require extensive review with Natural Heritage Bureau for rare plants and New Hampshire Fish and Game <coughs> for non-game endangered species. I'm sure you know this area is extremely sensitive um, with fish and game. This work will only be going on during the non-growing inactive season. <coughs> so that is middle October to the end of March. So that means we're not allowed to start under requirements until I believe it's October 15th is their timeline to March 31st. We have to be out of there 
with everything restored. Um, I know this wasn't stated in the letter that I saw, but Conservation Commission did have approval, what was it, last Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Last Wednesday, um, they did have some concerns about projects being restored properly. We do have requirements through the federal construction general permit and the statutory permit by notification do have restoration at least 70% to 85% germinated. Uh, we're definitely amenable to issuing a photo log or a restoration report for the construction general per permit. We actually have to do a report for them as well. So we would, uh, if you would like to add that as a condition, it's certainly amenable to that. As far as the timeline, this is pretty much the last permit that we're looking to get. So we could be looking to start as early as mid-October, ending in March. Um, this project spans Londonary and Hudson. Hudson's under the same time of year restriction as well. <coughs> and I think that's it. Do you have questions? Okay. What we'll do, we'll go to our uh, staff, the board, and then the public. This, uh, John. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I think Connor summarized it, uh, but the replacement of these 11 poles are what it entails. Uh, Conservation Commission has recommended uh, approval of the CUP and staff supports the engineering, supports the, uh, the CUP as well. That's all I have. Okay. Kelly? Uh, I think we've covered it all, but I'll just add that the applicant did meet with the Conservation Commission on last Tuesday, the 26th. Uh, in the comment that the commission made, uh, in addition to recommending an approval of the CUP, was again to um, request that the restoration include additional ATV deterrences, like a gate or something of the sort. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, I'll start. <coughs> Jason, we'll go through the board. I, I have no, I have no questions. Thank okay. you. Roger. I just have one from my own information. You're going 15 feet higher, you said, about? I don't have it in front of me unless it's, you do. It's probably closer to 5 to 10 based oh, on our, 10. our work list, yeah. Do you make a bigger base? Uh, they'll be slightly bigger because the steel is a little more like yes. tapered, um, but not a whole lot bigger. Okay, that's yep. all. Thank you. Jake? I'm all set, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I'm all <clears> set. <throat> Good. So there's no need to do an upgrade south of three going from the, the block number three down to the Hudson line? Not as of now, no. Um, never say never. For, yeah, never for the never. future, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very likely. Okay, good. That's it. Thank you. Jeff? Um, I'm all set, Mr. Chair. Okay, Johnny? I don't have any questions. Tony? Uh, just, just for the record, you you mentioned you you glossed over a little bit but i just want to reinforce that i heard correctly you said zero trees cut down correct yep uh vegetation to, maintenance do you have to trim any trees <coughs> no this no. right away is no tree involvement of any kind correct thank you okay and everything's in the the right of way correct okay it's a fairly big right away if you're familiar <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, been, there's been issues with trees so i just yep. wanted to make sure you were on record and if there were trees, that. I think it'd be good to talk to the uh, the neighbors, <laughs> mm -hmm. let them know what's what's happening, and get get their input. But are there any butters uh, present? Or anyone from the public have any questions, comments, and concerns in regards to the CUP? And I think we got a little bit of action out there. <laughs> Mr. Thanks Chairman. for sticking it through. John had to wake me up. <laughs> uh, John Farrell, Four Hancock Drive member of the town council. Uh, thank you, Tony, for asking the tree question. I have spent hours of my life that I will never receive back with ever source about trees and right of ways. This particular corridor that you're going through has been a nightmare for everybody who lives out there. And ever source has been all over the place. And I've been standing there listening to it <clears throat> with state senators, with state reps and everyone else. What I would ask of this board is is that part of the, uh, the the conditional use permit, you write something in there that tells them they have got to notify every abutter, door to door, their neighbors, and tell them exactly what they're doing so that they're informed, so that people like myself and the state legislators don't have to go out there and have meetings in the snow again like we did last year and got run around for weeks. 
Eversource has been a good neighbor over the years, but things have changed dramatically over the last three or four years, and it has been a very unpleasant experience for the people who live along that corridor. Thank you. I know when Liz LaRocca was here, she did an excellent job. With, yeah, she did you know, a great job. She was yeah. fantastic. Nobody like her does it anymore. Yeah, that's, that's the concern that we have. John has uh, demonstrated quite, uh, quite well. So put that in as a uh, condition. And there's another, another one uh, I think you had said uh, is a condition also. So there's two conditions to add, add in. Are you referring to the Conservation Commission comment? Yes. What about a gate? Mm -hmm. is that, I'm just clarifying, is that what you're referring to? The comment just, from the commission? Or the, the restoration, the uh, restoration photos. comment? Yeah, I think it's the, the restoration. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I just have a follow-up question. Yes. Um, yeah, to our Eversource partners. Um, to the, um, John's comments there, could you elaborate on what your communication plan is for the abutters? You know, what, what's gonna go in there? You know, kind of taking back recent history mm -hmm. um, and how can we enhance that? Definitely. All right, we can I'm gonna throw it to the to project the people services. behind me here. Yeah. Um, Ed, do you wanna come up? Okay. They're the ones that do all the notifications, yeah. so this is perfect. So this is Ed Kessler and uh, Jordan McKenzie, or McCarsley. They're from uh, the Project Services team at Eversource. Yes. Good evening. Hi. Hi. Um, so my name is Ed Kessler. I'm with uh, the uh, Project Services Division. Um, so um, I inherited this project from another project manager, um, Alex Green. And so um, at, the, at the beginning of this project, there was just a uh, letter that went out uh, to um, abutters on the line. Now, that's defined through our, we have a, a team that defines what who the direct abutters are to the line, and a mailing list gets provided to us as a company, and then we, we send that out uh, to anybody that's on the line. Um, we also, if there are people that are sensitive to some of the work and things of that nature, we can also add that to our list of notifications, um, and we're more than willing to do that. Um, I'd be more than happy to have a conversation with the gentleman over there to hear what his concerns are and to make sure that uh, we address them as needed. Um, we have made appropriate notifications um, out uh, to the people that abut the line, um, and that's kind of our position at this point, um, through mailers, th through some door-to-door. Uh, -door. Um, in fact, Jordan and I were out. It's been last week um, doing some door hangers and having some conversations you know with some stakeholders um, with some of the people that own some of the apple orchards in town and and so on and so forth um, so we have made uh, some some significant efforts to um, engage uh, the public um, and that's kind of where we're at on that what's been the um, response from the public you've said you've had these have conversations sure. by hang your door hangers what what if what's been the vibe that you've been getting um, essentially, you know, I think um, there have been some uh, conversations that we've had where at one point um, there was some clearing that had been done. And I think to uh, this gentleman's point, I guess there were some trees that were taken uh, back to the edge of the right of way, which was concerning to some of your stakeholders and, and residents. So we heard some conversations about that. Um, and so, you know, again, that was property that was cleared back to the right away the edge of the right away um, and so there were some conversations about that um, and so that was kind of some of it for the most part um, and then I'm trying to think of anything else that we I think that was essentially part of it there was some there was some questions about people doing helicopter work there's no helicopter work that's going to be um, being done on this particular project um, as far as notification goes for that um, there were some questions there um, we had conversations with some of the gentlemen from Elwood Orchards about their crops and, and making sure we're, you know, mindful of of their needs as far as working with them within their picking season. And unfortunately, this year was really kind of detrimental to that that industry with the frost that happened in the spring. So that was kind of a tough tough go for those guys. Um, so we've we've kind of we've been engaging at many levels. Um, we've been receiving phone calls from people as far as when we've done door hangers, engaging people there. Uh, but I think some of the, if you want to call them complaints or concerns, was when 
the vegetation team went out and they kind of cleared back and that was kind of a, a thing that we kind of heard you know over and over again yeah. uh, with people so if I can just yeah, sure. yeah. Hi, I'm Jordan McCluskey. I know Travis uh, butchered my last name. Uh, yeah. but that's all right. I won't, I won't hold it against him, even though he's my uh, cubicle roommate. Um, anyways, uh, like, Ed, like I was saying, um, we, we've had uh, conversations with stakeholders um, that have concerns with our previous work. But on the other hand, we also have great conversations with uh, stakeholders that absolutely love uh, what we do. Obviously, uh, improving structures increases the reliability for everybody but also um, we do a great job with our restoration efforts um, and what Ed and I do uh, specifically is we we speak to these property owners um, gather any concerns that they have um, you know whether it's um, from from previous instances or just general uh, concerns they have with our work um, and we bring that back to the team the project uh, team uh, to try and mitigate any concerns um, and Ed and I work with, uh, with these stakeholders step-by-step step of each process. We're out in the field uh, weekly, um, just speaking to other current projects that we're on right now. We check in um, with, with property owners, whether it's phone call, in person, check the progress of the work, make sure that our contractors are respectful um, of the property, such as cleaning up after you know, the week's work. Um, and then we see the, the tail end of it as well when the project is completed and the restoration efforts begin. Um, we don't. We want to leave uh, the property as 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 it looked before, if not better. And um, we've had some some great conversations um, with our previous work, and uh, you know, with with uh, the upcoming jobs that we our projects that we have as well. Um, so it's it's not all negative. There is actually a lot of positive conversations we we do have with with stakeholders. And, and, and on top of like how things are monitored. You know, we have not only the contractors on the site, but also our environmental. Can you get a little um, closer to the microphone, please? Is that better? Yes. Okay. So um, as far as monitoring progress goes, as the project goes day over day, week over week, et cetera, um, not only do we have our partners in the environmental teams uh, that are monitoring things, we also have our project managers that are monitoring things that are overseeing the, like, the large scope of the project, but we also have our construction reps that are kind of working hand in hand with the contractors on location, and they're checking in with those guys as well and, and monitoring progress as things. And so if there's any concerns or anything like that that the project um, that we see from constituents or from stakeholders, those are things that we relay to the project team to say, hey, listen, um, we got a gate on this property. It's not getting locked up at night. Um, somebody, you know, took a four wheeler up there that's concerned with the property owner. Okay, fine, let's get that gate locked up, or whatever the case may be. So we are that trying to do that conduit, that forward facing piece, to you know work with landowners, work with stakeholders, municipal officials, um, find out what their concerns are, and just make sure that you know we're checking the blocks and, and doing the best we can. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have one comment, and sir. you actually brought it up about the gates. Yes, sir. Uh, I would highly recommend if you have gates, you lock them, and yes, you sir. make sure your local fire departments have access to those gates. Yeah, I mean, so in in typical fashion, um, on with with some of those things, what we'll do is we'll daisy chain, where it's kind of a, a combination of lock to lock on a chain. Um, so obviously, we would want to promote. Uh, public safety, public well-being when it comes to forest fire protection, make sure that any municipal official has access, you know, to gates and also work with property owners uh, to make sure that, you know, they're aware of that, you know, if the fire department needs to get out there, whatever the case is, that there's availability to do that, whether it be for search and rescue, you know, lost hiker, or whatever the case is, but be able, be able to have that uh, availability. Okay, thank you. So Chair. based on, thank you, Mr. Chair. So based on, um, and, and Jeff had a great question, but Based on my experience, yes, sir. The the initial door hangers are the easy part, right? So people get the door hanger, they say, "Oh, something's going on." They call in, you explain something. What? And also on top of that, we do do a bailer, so there is actually got stuff it. that goes. Just just to be clear, yeah, got that part. Okay, but cool. everything's fine until someone gets a stick in the eye. Yep. Because once the project starts, mm -hmm. it's a whole different playing field. Sure. Because I didn't know the trucks were going to be that big. I didn't know it was going to be that noisy. I didn't know they were going to start at 8.01. I was hoping for 8.15. All kinds of things happen once the project starts because reality hits, okay? So, and, 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 and that's just typical of, of humans. You know, it's easy. They look at a piece of paper. They say, how, how bad could it be? And then all of a sudden the, 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 the trucks show up and, the, and, and whatever. So... My comment to you, uh, daisy chaining off of Jeff, 
here is that is that you reach back out to people to say, hey, how are we doing? What are your concerns? What's going on? Our crews aren't supposed to start at 8. Are they starting at 7.30? Just to, so that you can continue to get that feedback because it's way easier to do that than to have those people calling the chairman of the town council at 6 o'clock in the morning saying, there's a truck in my front yard or, or whatever. So, so my suggestion is take it one step further or two steps further, whatever you think is appropriate, to make sure you're reaching out back again to, to those abutters to see, hey, how are we doing? Because you all have a plan, but you also have subcontractors. Yes, sir. Right? And, and if the subcontractor sees we had three days of rain and now the sun is up at 5 o'clock and we got to be out of here by whatever the end date is and we're 27 hours behind already, they're going to want to start at 5 o'clock, right? They're not supposed to, but you're not there. You know, so th the, the implication is that they're going to self-check and self-regulate. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I mean, I'm on plenty of construction sites. So, so I, my suggestion to you is please, for your own benefit uh, and the benefit of, of the, the volunteers that, that work on these boards and the town council and, and, and all the other folks, that you recheck with people as a double check to see how, how are we doing. So that would be my suggestion. Yeah, and I, I feel like that's an important part of stakeholder engagement. I understand that there's, I think you hit it right on the head, where there's um, there's everything on the front side, which is really, really good, yeah, yeah. but it's the follow-up on the back end that really counts. Yeah. Because yeah, everyone's, everyone's friends at the yeah, beginning. I, I get it. The goal yeah. is to be friends at the end. Right? No, and, that, you know, and honestly, you know, and I'm just going to, I'm going to throw it out there. Jordan and I are new to the company, okay? You know, we've, we've and so we, we want to do a good job, and I want to make sure that you know I come back here if you see my name or his name on, on the agenda, or whatever the case is. You go, okay, yeah, these guys these guys came through with what they said they're going to do. Um, I don't want their you know I, I got a I got a reputation, and I want to make sure it's it's, it's solidified in, in good standing here with the board and other boards as well. Um, and so um, it's important for me to make sure that stakeholders are in a good spot um, and that we communicate well. Um, is every day going to be a sunshiny day? No. You know, are we going to fall down? Yeah. But it's what we do when we do fall down, I think is what really counts. Um, and I would, I would just say that, you know, we're going we're gonna to do our best to make sure that people are informed. Thank you. I appreciate your comments. Yes, sir. And just, um, just, one, just one more additional thing, just to speak to your point about the stakeholder engagement. Um, Ed and I are currently working on a, on a separate project where there was concerns of uh, OHRV use on, on the right of way. Um, so we actually went back to the team and were able to install a gate uh, for for this uh, specific <coughs> portion uh, of the land. And we were out there today to speak to uh, the stakeholders um, and to hear their thoughts on, on things. And, and they were actually very happy that the gate was installed. Uh, I think it was about a, a week turnaround that the concern was brought up. We brought it back to the team and, and we had a gate installed almost immediately. Um, so, so we do a good job of, of reaching back out. Uh, and keeping a pulse on on key stakeholders or and, and you know abutters of the project, and we will continue to do so. Thank you, John. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do know Alex Green. He was the person I dealt with on this last project and everything. And as he mentioned, I sit on the town council. Here's the issue: when it gets to me, and it has for the last eight years, and I wind up out there on site, it's because nobody followed up. It's because they didn't do all the things you just said. I'll be very candid with you. It wouldn't get to me if that was what was going on. And that's, that's the past history. So I would strongly suggest you go back and look at who the abutters were who were affected by all this cutting. Go talk to them. They're, they're going to be the ones that have something to say about what it is that you're doing. Open up a communication and relationship. I don't want to be out there having these conversations with you as in, you know, in the middle of, you know, of winter and, you know, and all this. But if you guys got to get more proactive and it's not just you guys, I'm not talking about you. It's Eversource in general. They come in front of the council and then National Grid comes in and they say, blah, 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 blah. OK, and I have the same conversation with them. Nobody seems to listen to what Tony's saying. If you don't do that, I can promise you that this council in this town We'll, we'll be very active, and we'll have a lot to say about it, and we'll hold you accountable. All I ask is, is that we, we really, we understand you have work to do. We just need you to 
do everything you just said. So I appreciate that. Thank you. And I, and I, and I appreciate your candor. And I, and I think at the end of the day, you know, by, and, and if you don't just kind of stay right where you're, cause you may want to comment is that for us to engage, it's not only stakeholders, it's people like yourself. So, you know, I would say that I want to have a conversation <laughs> with you after this meeting so we can actually have a good conversation. And, and no, I'm just saying, like, I think that's important because if we're, if, we're, if we're looking at this thing from a global perspective to kind of really get granular on some of the things that you're talking about, I think it's worth us, you know, having a meeting and, and getting a conversation. So sure. I think that would be a smart business move for us. Give you some sort of an idea. The planning board chairman's been sitting there since 2006. Sure. He's 40 years consecutive in the town. The guy who asked you about the gates is the yep. retired fire chief. Yep. I'm 14 years on the town council. Sure. There's people in this room highly invested. Yep. Okay. There's a commercial realtor in this room that knows more about him and his family's been here for years and years and years. People in this in this community care and they're gonna say something. Sure. So, but that's how we feel about things. Okay, well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else from the uh, public? I just have a quick follow-up question. Yeah, I'll, I'll go right back to the board. Okay. So, so the, I'll, I'll close the, uh, the public hearing part of it and uh, board. Yeah, just really quick, um, Kelly, how many positive um, interactions have we had from residents saying Eversource has done a great job? So I have not directly received those yeah. comments. Um, and I think it's great that you guys you know, do share. I, I think it is awesome that we are you are sharing the positive interactions, but I can't, uh, you know, it's really important that you take this feedback that you're receiving tonight um, and be proactive because I, I have seen it. I've only been on this board for about three years, but I've seen a lot of reactiveness from mm. a, a member source um, and other kind of um, utility um, organizations. And I, you know, we're at a point we have to be proactive. And um, you, you're both new to Eversource from your references. I would sure. assume that they, um, you know, previous legendary projects have recaps that you. I would hope that you can go back and refer to, you know, get those stakeholder names really kind of like, sh you know, definitely kind of show us the partnership that you w you really want to kind of continue here and, you know, take those initiatives. So best of luck. Thank you. Tony. Yeah, I think, I think, um, so you walked into a little bit of a bee's nest. Okay. So it, it happens. Been, I've been there. Um, I think the positive comment thing is a is a, a little bit odd because in 2023 there are, there aren't a lot of people that are going to pick up the phone or one of these things whatever they are and call Kelly and say hey I just want to let you know that <laughs> Eversource did a great job that's just not how life works it's 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 if if they're not happy. That's when they pick up the phone and, I, and, and start calling everybody. And so <laughs> I just want to, can I, I just clarify? So I don't get the calls. Yeah. I public think work the public, public works yeah. and the chairman of the council get the calls. <coughs> so but, but I just want to clarify that. But it's unusual. Yeah, I didn't get any positive calls either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. But it's, a, it's, un, it's unusual. Come on. Let, let's put it all in. We're putting everything on the table. If people don't call to say they're happy. <laughs> they just don't. It's just not human nature. And so... Um, the, 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 the part that we're, we're striving for, I think, is the no calls at all, <laughs> which is the same as getting happy calls. Yeah. That, I, that's, I, really, yeah. that's really where, that, that's the rules of the game, yeah. I, I think, from as, as one person. Yeah. So um, no, no calls should be your goal. Yeah. And again, we, we do have you know, some lists of, of sensitive abutters that we, sure. who are not actually abutters. Well, yeah, we, yeah. So absolutely, that, but, but you know, we we, it, we reach it, out to, and it, we've, it, we've had conversations. It, yeah, there's an interest because those that go yeah. beyond the abutters, there's interest there also. Right. So the things that we know, will you know, we can we can definitely address. And I think like with anything, sometimes you know something will will pop its head up, and you know we'll have to triage and address it as as the best we can. But the things that we that we know, uh, Mr. Rugg, that that we're aware of, we'll, we'll definitely take a, you know t you know take take action on, and and, and we have. <coughs> Mr. Chair, yes. Um, I'd like to say one thing. Um, 
<clears throat> I, I would agree. Be proactive instead of reactive. And with that, I'd like to make a motion to well, approve. Can I, can I add one thing too? <laughs> <laughs> I got a motion on the floor here. <laughs> uh, I don't, don't have a second yet. Have a second. <laughs> and I'll second it after I Thank finish. You. After I finish. Thank after you. After finish. One of the things that I because I've had you folks on my property doing some work, and one of the things that I find extremely annoying, and actually you did a good job. Um, was that just a positive comment? <laughs> yeah, but I didn't, uh, I didn't call Can I just chime it. in briefly so that you've closed <laughs> so the public hearing? So I just want to be yeah, cognizant so public of hearing is, procedure. Is, is closed. <laughs> well, I just wanted to add one more thing because I thought all the comments were, were, were spot on. But we're, we're, we're make, still working with our, uh, you know. Uh, make the make sure, uh, this is quick if you let me just get it out. Um, <laughs> make sure if you folks change your positions you also follow through with telling who the next person is in line. Yeah. That that's replacing you. Yep. Because that's, that's been my frustrating part is that I'll have a concern and I go and I try to, and I, all you get is this person doesn't work here anymore. And so you develop a relationship, things are getting done and all of a sudden you're like, "Well, where the hell do I who do I call now?" Mm -hmm. So Okay. That's I think is important in addition to all the other stuff. And I'll second your Thank motion. Thank you. Okay. I have a second, but I need the motion first. Uh, I, he already made a motion. Yeah. yeah. I made a motion to grant the conditional use permit, Mr. However, Rowe. are we going to add the two conditions that we've talked about? Yes. Okay. That's good. Okay. So, is that a motion? Second. Two conditions. Second. I have a second. Third. Any further discussion by the board? Nope. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Mentions she votes affirmative and uh, conditional use permit has been granted. And uh, please work with people. People appreciate the personal contact. That is uh, that is the uh, secret and the follow up. And uh, any problems or anything? Uh, work with staff, please. So. Yep. Yeah. Great. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, for your thank time. you for your time. Thank you. Okay, other business. We have a public hearing for the adoption of the 2023, which is the fiscal year 2025 to 2030 capital improvement plan. The proposed plan can be viewed online or during business hours in the Planning and Economic <coughs> Development Department. And uh, I want to show that Ted, Ted is back, and uh, he was not part of the vote, so it's a 700 vote on that. Uh, so, the whole I capital improvement plan is uh, specified in the statutes. Uh, RSA 674, of actually five, starts it and it goes to <coughs> eight. Uh, it's basically a planning document. Uh, it aids the governing bodies, uh, which is both the town council, the school board, and the budget committee in their budgeting process. The CIP is really a recommendation. It's an expression of needs of the community and it's needed for impact fees and growth management ordinances, which we don't have. And it aids in uh, helping the uh, planning uh, board determining whether a subdivision is premature or is scattered in that as regards to the public services <coughs> that are provided. So I just want to uh, thank uh, the uh, CIP uh, committee, uh, Jake Butler, who's chair, Jeff Penter, both from the planning board, Ted Combs from the town council, Bob Slater, chair and from the school board and uh laura meyer uh who's from the budget committee sarah 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 pardon sarah sarah meyer oh uh oh so she'll I'll forgive correct, you i'll correct that sarah sarah meyer from the budget committee so uh also what we've had able help from uh kelly uh and I think Ben probably has made some contribution to this also. Uh, certainly our staff, uh, Jason Campo and uh, Lisa McKenney from the school board, and especially from uh, Bob Slater. And it's a good, uh, good effort on your part. So thank you. So uh, I'll turn it over to Kelly to uh, <coughs> carry the ball further. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, as you indicated, 
this process is in accordance with section 5.5 .5 of the town charter as well as RSA 674 colon 5. Um, this document is a document that is formally adopted by the planning commission, uh, the planning board, um, and is meant to be used as a tool for the town council and budget committee through the budget process. Uh, so this evening we are seeking a formal adoption from this board um, of the plan before you. We have four uh, school projects and one municipal project this year. Uh, I will defer to the school and um, our very own Dave Wally to give the overview of the projects. Uh, but I did want to note uh, specific to the Lions Hall, uh, Dave did give an overview of where we are currently with regard to the Lions Hall uh, Community Center project. Uh, we have posted um, this afternoon an online form to our website. Uh, which is intended for uh, residents or anybody who wants to provide input specific to the Lions Hall. Uh, and we are also holding a listening session on October 14th from 10 to noon right here in this room <coughs> with regard to the Lions Hall. Okay. Uh, we'll do the presentations and I think what we're look, looking for, uh, we're going to be discussing the, the merits of one project or another and what, what it's worth and how it all fits together in the CIT plan. And the intent is to keep the tax rate at a nice even level in theory so we don't like the uh, spikes depressions the thing is uh, it uh, creates problems uh, budget wise also what do you do with the extra money of course when you give it back to the people uh, the tax rate goes down the next year <coughs> it goes right back up again and then you hear the complaints so uh, who wants to start uh, I think uh, Dave you led last time I don't know but maybe we'll hear from the school first so it, basically anything to add <laughs> Mr. Chair uh, can I take note first that certainly our numbers have really changed with yeah. these projects and as well there were new developments with the school board that had happened last night is that correct Bob yeah, yeah. so yeah Mr. Chair I'll hit on that um, our meeting last night uh, the building committee that we um, put in place uh, roughly two months ago to vet the project uh, something the school side's never done before uh, we've put some new uh, new tools you know out there to use to get things vetted prior to deciding whether to move forward with a project and get some expertise in the field we had actually put a building committee together of professionals uh, project engineers managers construction architect uh, community members of course and um, they were in place for about two months and uh, met with the architects met with the our OPM uh, project management team um, kindergarten committee did tours and then had several meetings to uh, vet this project to see if the number and if the if it was viable to do it in in the way we have it laid out with uh, 1a and then 1b full day um, they presented last night to the school board and um, brought forward some good recommendations and unanimously of a five person board um, um, brought a vote in to move forward with the full project of 1a 1b and full day uh, to the school board um, the school board then uh, deliberated uh, with their recommendation imp more information from Lisa and Dan uh, the superintendent and um, we had made a decision last night uh, 401 member missing uh, due to work uh, to move the project forward this year to the ballot um, the numbers had changed a little bit um, it's a total of about 34 million two hundred thousand uh, total package um, that that it was presented by the architect and project management team and that's the number that was vetted through the building committee uh, and presented to us last night okay so we, we will update those numbers and yep. I don't uh, consider that a substantial change it's just yep. updating yep. the uh, numbers because it's kind of a, a process sure but, uh, but I mean the project is, is there <coughs> we know it's been approved yep. by the uh, you know at least this point the school board to move to the ballot that's correct so there's a lot of work to get to that point um, but that's where it's at now with the school board yep. so 
So question for you, Kelly. Um, when we presented this, we had it in phase one, phase two. Yeah, I'll go and now that the project is going to be one project, do you want me to give you update the numbers in phase one and phase two and we keep it that way? Or are we going to combine them into one project for the CIP? Um, if, if the update is to make it one project and one budget, it yep. is. Mm -hmm. uh, we one, one financial request? Yes. Then please send me that, that update and we can add it to the uh, okay. spreadsheet. We'll do. Yeah. As, long, as long as the board's okay with that. Yeah. Yeah, I think we need what is, is current, what, yes. we, what we know. Because yep. if, so if like what we have or uh, what presented last month gets out, that's right. not, sure. not right. accurate. Agree. Yep. yep. Yeah. I'll update that in phase five. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So then should we wait? Do we not do anything tonight and just wait? I think we can go with it because they, they've got the numbers. We don't have it on, on the paper, you know, to show like, like that. <coughs> I would think internally the staff can update the numbers on this piece of paper. Which has been done in the past. Okay. It's just to keep it as, uh, as accurate as That's possible. Fine. But we're going to keep it as two separate projects. Did I hear that? Or no, it'll no, be one, one project. project. We're combine it into one, 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 one now, number, Lynn. One yeah. number one priority be one. project. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's much simpler to uh, present. Yeah, and, and I'll just hit a little bit, if you don't mind, on, on, on part of the reasoning of majority of the board is the education piece, that the full-day kindergarten, um, you know, is, 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 a, is needed uh, with our programs as well as uh, kindergarten um, for, the, for the future of our education programs as we try to, you know, get our education ratings back up you know where they are this is one helpful way to get us you know and as you most of you know we've implemented the one-to-one -one program at the middle school all three grades this year that's going to help us there um, but the the key factor here was to get uh, hopefully get the voters to approve full day kindergarten and then the space needs were are, are, are a key factor as well with our programs um, and that and this will house the classrooms as well as the programs and uh, some staff room as well as some of the programs now utilize the hallways to to work with these children and that where we've run run out of space so it will eliminate it will remove um, the portables uh, if this is approved and um, you know and that's a cost of approximately forty five thousand dollars every two to three years uh, for a lease so those will go away but um, this will be, uh, this will serve as, and, it, and it will, it'll take a capacity of three to 340 students. Um, so there is some room there, and with some, some work with the architect team, there is room to expand if it ever got above that, and that was looked at as well. So if we were short and needed to expand, there still would be room on the property uh, many years down the road. Um, so all that was looked at by the building committee as well, so. Mr. Chair, I'll chime in as I am on the building committee for the kindergarten that this also addresses a lot of the security needs, a lot of safety needs, and as a lot of the health care needs for many of the students who go there as um, certainly a lot of the health care needs for a lot of the students have really increased over time. And the small space that they have currently is just not sufficient. Um, and being able to get, you know, the safety end of all the kids out of the hallways that are currently there and as well out of closets and small rooms that have special ed and um, a lot of the speech therapy classrooms, to be able to actually have them be in real classrooms will be a true benefit for the education going forward. Okay, anything to add? <laughs> Staff? I'll go through it with the board. Anything else, Ted? Um, the only other item that was big from the building committee was that the, uh, I guess, how should I say, the cost prevention to pass this this coming year uh, would be huge compared to if we push this out to further years as the cost escalations and the inflation of uh, labor and materials uh, we've all been seeing across the board has been going up a good deal over time and the compounding factor if we push this out a few years to five to six to ten years this project will greatly escalate over time I think I could add too that the building committee also said last night that um, by splitting the project up 
in two phases mm -hmm. actually ends up costing you more money. Yes. Um, you have startup costs. Yeah, you have startup costs and finishing costs. So if you do that in two phases, it and it would actually cost us more, yeah. along with the escalation of time. Um, costs aren't coming down, um, so they had recommended that mm -hmm. you know, put it into one and and just try to get the support of the voters. Yes. That and also the under other end was a big concern was a confusion of voters if we split this into mm. two votes or two multi-year votes. We were had a big concern of uh, voter confusion, yeah. saying I get one, not the other, <laughs> one or not the other, or s had people saying, "Didn't I already vote for this?" So we wanted to make this more simplified for people in many respects. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, so I think that um, I think it's unfortunate that that the, the that the taxpayers are no matter how you do it, are going to be confused that kindergarten costs so much. Um, but by the same token, the school board's been beat over the head for the past <coughs> 10 years about test scores. Um, full day kindergarten, as one person's opinion, is step one to getting test scores better. Um, and, um, you know, there are many towns in the, in the, in the state that were able to implement full day kindergarten just by the superintendent and the school board saying next year we're having it because there was no capital cost to it. In Londonderry we don't have that advantage. There is a capital cost to it because you don't have a building for full day kindergarten. So you're really doing two things in one vote. You're saying yes I want full day kindergarten and yes I'm willing to pay for it. And that's going to be a, a, a task that, that Quite a few committees have said they're willing to take on, and, and um, I, I wish everybody the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Danny. I have anything. Jeff. <coughs> yeah, no, I have nothing, ad nothing other to. I can't talk tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, good. Nice I'm good, Mr. King. <laughs> 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 okay, Lynn. No, I have nothing to add. Okay, Al. Yeah, I do have something to add. Looking at this, 1A is priority two, 1B is priority five. So if we vote tonight to accept this document as the CIP, this is the CIP That's that the planning board. board has adopted. That's I agree with board. Tony on that. Are you looking at the right one? Yeah. This is the one that I have. Look at the far right hand column. Oh, all the way to the right. The priority ones and twos. <coughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, right. Throwing yeah. us for a curveball there, Al. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, be you scramble know, hand, hand, but, uh, <laughs> I guess the thing, if you're going to, I agree 100%. Filling the bolt out saves money on infrastructure like you wouldn't believe. I agree with that. But if we vote on this the way it shows here, the public is going to look at this and say, okay, now we got 1A, 1B, and this is the official CIP document, and then you're going to say later, well, no, we combined them both, and I think it's going to be very confusing, and I don't think people will be very happy. So I think we're going to combine it yeah. on the CIP correct? So yeah. once the board is ready to make a motion <coughs> this evening to adopt the plan or not, <coughs> you would uh, include that you will be combining the two projects and I will update the spreadsheet accordingly. That's perfect. I just wanted to make that perfectly clear for everybody that it will be so done that way. Yes, tonight. so the final approved document will reflect these two projects being now one. Kelly, can I ask how the scoring would work so being combined? Yes, just so for clarity. This, this board should also clarify how you want to prioritize one project now, now that it's going to be one. Yeah, is that something we should we discuss can. now or? No. We can. Um, as mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, if I could be heard, as, as someone who ran the CIP for 15 years, um, if you're combining these projects based on what I observed of the CIP, you would just move one, one B <laughs> to one A and leave the scoring of one A because mm -hmm. the scoring was done based on the secondary project, but feed into the first. I don't think the scoring changes other than the top one supersedes and becomes the score mm -hmm. and you just move into it. Okay. 
I would agree with in, that. In my opinion, as the person who ran CIP for 15 years. I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I don't you know, think it's not touch screen. <laughs> I was trying to do that last time. I don't think it's really touch screen. I know, it's not. I was sitting there just pressing it. It's not touch screen. Um, okay, anything else, uh, Al? No, no, no. That, okay, that, that's we'll good. That cleared everything up, and uh, everybody out there knows now what we need to do and how we're going to do it. Yes. John's got things straightened out for us. Jake? I'm pretty good. I'd have to agree with a lot of what's um, what's been said, and I do think that um, having a full-day kindergarten is going to make a very big impact in the success of, of our students, you know. It's much like a house. You've got to need a strong foundation for a good house. We don't have a strong foundation right now with our kindergarten. Mm -hmm. um, as a parent who's currently in this phase of their life, it is... Uh, I don't know how they do anything in the time that they're in the kindergarten, you know? <laughs> you know we God bless you. Tour last, uh, last year, I was just amazed at yeah. what gets, uh, gets yeah. done there. It, it was, was just it not the two and a half or three there. hours of, all of sorts time. of problems, and it's yeah. absolutely amazing that you get a, get a good product out yep. of that. I think, I think this is, in my opinion, is long overdue, um, and I think that if – if it does go through, hopefully it does go through, I think you will start to see better test scores yes. and because you're getting a more well-rounded, educated student. Yeah. So. Thank you. Roger. Agree with everything else. I think I spoke the last time, and I'll say it again. Any penny you spend here is worth $10 every year in the, in the next. The kids need this to get going. And I would remind you, I went to work at South School, a brand new school that was already cut out the art room because they were overcrowded to begin with. The second year was in it, in it started. Make sure you can get a couple of years out of whatever you're doing before you do it. Yeah. And any trainer or anybody will tell you the earlier you start somebody doing the right thing, yeah. children in kindergarten, to get going, it, they'll carry that for the rest of their lives. And that's what we need. And if it's 34,000 or 34 whatever, grand. Yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> I don't care. I'll tell you. Don't cheat up. Yeah, I'm old. Thirty-four thousand dollars <laughs> used to be a lot of money. See, now we should have done it back then. <laughs> Thirty-four million. Today does isn't probably what thirty four thousand was, <laughs> but anyway, I just yeah. wanted to make that comment. Thank you. And it never got better. I was there four years, and we kept losing more and more kids in less in the same amount of space. It yeah. was just so. Please spend the money at, correctly, but spend it. To your point, Roger, that's the reason we would we did the building committee, we did the kindergarten committee, combined all the information for the future, yes. and we have. A, a foresight for any additional room many years down the road if that's needed so a lot of a lot of thought goes into these projects now and a lot of you know our master plan which is in place for all the buildings that for the future now you can start looking at it a lot sooner and plan much better so thank you for those points though at, at full build out what is the total enrollment that it can handle three to 340 340 and you're at what now 200 this year is low. It's like 207, but we usually run 250 to 260, 270. I think you'll see that number change drastically. I do when too. You have a full day kindergarten. We're doing a study now, the superintendent, so we should have that number in a couple of weeks. Um, you know, we've hired a company to go out and do a study with all the the real estate and yep. other daycares and yeah, and that I'm, other I'm, programs that I'm, offer full I'm, day. I'd be willing to guarantee there's a lot of people who just aren't sending their kid to the kindergarten right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, so I think we, we think that that might be what has happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, potentially yep. hearing yeah. all the talk about full day K that maybe they have sought out um, because it is an unusually low number this year. Yeah, and I think there's a fair amount that may not be doing anything. Yeah, because of Which cost even, of correct. programs Absolutely. and they just can't afford it. Absolutely. So I think, you know, like I said, this is based on education, and and I really think, <laughs> especially with our programs, getting them started sooner and more hours. Um, in that program will help them grow out of the program, you know, at a younger age Absolutely. and that. So um, th that's the main reason for this. 
when you say the number of kids, there's two. There's a morning kindergarten now and an afternoon. That's correct. Is that the that's concept? total? That's, that's the total. Yeah, and then kids. leap varies um, with birth dates, so that changes every month as they become three years old. They're they're eligible to to come in. So, but the other thing is, I'm sure, as you just mentioned, there's a lot of people paying for yeah. all day care yeah. once they get it paid for. Yeah. And I think the, uh, the YMCA sends a bus. Yep. And after school, yep. and they go right there. Yep. So, so. Yeah. There's a significant amount of transition time. I mean, if you think about it, for our current half day, they're in they're in class for an hour and a half, um, two and a half hours, and because it's a central location, a, you know, a bus ride could be forty to fifty five minutes right. both ways. Yep. Um, on both, you know, and then it's, it, you know, it's great for our kids. It's great for the families that are, but it's also great for our town, you know, to have the infrastructure to support a full day kindergarten program. Um, it's just, um, you know, looking forward to seeing how it all kind of plays out. But I, I definitely think that, you know, bumping this up to, you know, one, you know, makes the most sense. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Jason. Yeah, I completely support it. I mean, there's absolutely no reason for kids to be getting educated in hallways and closets. So this is this is absolutely needed. And it was you. needed 10 years ago, and now it's definitely needed now. So I was educated in hallways and closets at cell school. Explains a lot. Actually, the rest this of the classroom was in the classroom. It was, just, it was just you that was in the closet. I was going to say, was that a discipline problem? <laughs> yeah. Mr. Chair, I just want to add in that I really want to commend uh, our third party group, uh, Trident, and the third party group that did the estimating end. They were a huge benefit for the building committee to be able to come up uh, with the right recommendations for the school board. Um, and as well, they were able to also help pinpoint cost saving items over time. And uh, Jeff pointed out one of them, but didn't really go into it, is the, the busing savings of just running busing at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day compared to basically four times a day is actually one of the savings. And as well, the other item is increase in actually revenue from the state by moving to full-time that yeah. not a lot of people touch upon. Right now we only get um, half of the um, adequacy for those students because they only go half-time. So if they were there all day, we would get 50%. It, w it would double. double. Right. Yeah. So I think, too, um, I think it's a, from, a, from a marketing and advertising standpoint, so it's going to be very important for the community to understand that there's also a lot of other children in that building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's more, way more than just kindergarten. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. Way more. And the, 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 the general population in the town, Doesn't I guarantee, yep. does not know that. Yep. Yep. And so that's going to have to be part of the, of the deal as well to help, help them understand. It may be only 150 uh, kindergarten kids, but there's also another... 100, 100 of these plus. and another 40 of these and right. 30 of those, yeah. you know, w with all the different programming that's going on there with the with the three year olds and the and the special ed kids and yeah. all the services yeah. and, and the, the special needs and the special that needs that brings, kids and that that brings and whatever. So it's so that. so we're talking about kindergarten, mm -hmm. but we're also talking about uh, the the all of the programming in the kindergarten building. That's mm -hmm. correct. And so. It's more than 140, 150 kindergarten <coughs> kids. That, that's all I'm saying, and, and, that, and the word's got to get out. And, and to your point, Tony, this building was built in 2000. Right. Kindergarten in 2000 is not what it is in 2023. It's it's evolved. It's changed as it has in in all our buildings with the programs, and those have ex those have really expanded, um, and that's where a lot of our space needs are needed at this time. Um, for those services, so um, we want to make sure they get that quality service um, as well as the education, and that's the reason for. I think everybody came to the conclusion that let's let's do the full day for the education portion and the space needs for our programs to help those students as well. So, yeah, and and, and, and to that point, when when 
when Roger and I were in kindergarten, he's a little bit older than me, but <laughs> all the kids were lined up in, the, in their little rows, and, and there was a chair and a desk and a teacher in the front teaching penmanship. Yeah. No such thing as penmanship anymore, but now <laughs> you, have, you have kids in the classroom, and you have four aides, uh, seven wheelchairs, three walkers, mm -hmm. um, a nurse, uh, and, and all kinds of other stuff going on in that classroom, Correct. which is why the, the State Department of Education said classrooms now in a newer building need to be larger Correct. to accommodate those, those types yeah. of things. So, yeah. so yeah. It, it's changed dramatically. A lot. Yes. Um, yep. so, anyway. In the last 20 years, I, I, I'm finding it has changed a lot. Yeah. You know, what's, what's required? You really get into special needs and the, you know, Yep. So the whole education process has changed. So. Well, to your point, it was great to have the planning board last year go through the visits as well as our budget committee in town goes through it every year. Um, so it's, it, they've, they've also seen, you know, the difference and as well as the most of you on this board seen it last year. So yeah. we thank you for taking that tour. It was an education. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't they? And a good institution. No? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jason. Um, would the schools stay open during construction or would they have to go to other schools during that time yeah it'll be phased out um and that so uh, the 1a would go on first which is uh three classrooms and and some some other additional rooms um and that will then they would be able to bring the students in in the back of the building um the new the front of the building will get a new vestibule and all the offices would be moved to the front of the building to open up <laughs> So all the classrooms are in, in there, the space needs where the portables are, that gives us a spot to put those students in that small 1A, and then they would start phase two as well as uh, full day kindergarten wing while we, we still have school, and that'll be phased out through Lavalley Brenzinger, the architect firm that has done our master plan as well as working on each building project with us, okay. and that's their specialty so that mm -hmm will be set up by the construction management team that we end up hiring. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, this is a public hearing. I just want to, at this moment, just go to the, the public, see if there's any, uh, as far as the school is concerned, any uh, questions, comments, concerns. Oh, do, I, do I get to speak now? Uh, oh, oh. Yes. Is there's the always the person who's here for the public hearing? Yeah. <laughs> there's always the opportunity for the public to speak at Thanks the right place, the right time. I'm know. really happy to be here. This is like over $100 million between this and everything else. It's probably the largest CIP in the history of the town. I highly encouraged everyone to come here. I emailed the chairman to ask him if this could go first because I figured there'd be so many people here to talk about it, and nobody showed up to talk about it. Nobody. No, you did. <laughs> sure you over a hundred million dollars yep. and nobody came mm -hmm. thank you you're, you're welcome means are all gonna pass. I'm surprised too <laughs> but there's many surprises in the I, I do have one more question. for the town I'd like to get move along uh, Roger you know to, you know, we have the town uh, town side to do so I, I think I think we've uh, Built this enough, so. Sure. But th thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, and congratulations, Lisa, on your retirement. Yes. And the work <laughs> begins. Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. You. Thank you. <laughs> we don't want to. Okay, so we get the school oh, okay. projects taken care of. I, think yeah. I, I split this up, but school go, goes first because I think did, it's going to be. Did you have any other questions on the other two? SAU with the high school. Uh, those are a few years. Those are a few few years. Yeah, Down the I, road. I think they're just kind of like uh, we do more. Is nothing's as changed as on them. There. Nothing's they're changed there. on those tonight. But yep. we just wanted to update you on what yeah, we. I think the most important is what's going to happen. What's going to happen? Yep. Sure. Agree. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. And our town side is uh, the old Lions Hall. Or the old town hall, or uh, if Ann was here, should there's been a lot of conversation and name on it. I think it should just be the Dave Wally Community oh, Center, no, personally. Respectfully, <laughs> respectfully, no, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, you got the old part right. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> You're young, Dave. <laughs> uh, 
just some light commentary uh, since we were here last with you in the building. When we put the CIP <coughs> together, that was back in May and June, uh, coming into July. At that point, we didn't even have uh, a contract signed to do a conceptual draft of it. That presentation was uh, Monday night in front of the town council. And uh, the premise of that task was to um, reopen the building, meeting all of today's codes and requirements, uh, and restoring the services or the availability, if you will, to what it was when, before it priorly closed. Uh, it is a 254-year-old building. It is a municipal-owned building. And um, it's, it's, it's not something that was planned uh, or forecasted, and, but yet here we are and we have to deal with it. Um, you know, in CIP, I understand what that stands for and the projects that come before it are usually obviously surrounding education, public safety, infrastructure. And so this project is kind of unique because uh, it really speaks to the heart of a community. And it's almost a gut check moment that um, we're at a crossroads um, to what we do with the facility. What does it mean uh, to the town of Leonard area? What does it represent? And what kind of services um, or usefulness do we think that the taxpayers could get out of the facility or do without, without having it? And so um, just for some numbers, uh, last time I believe, uh, Lynn, you had asked, uh, you know, what is it costing us right now to just leave it as it is? And I, we now have a year's worth of um, electrical bills, uh, you know, running it, obviously, at the lowest temperatures possible. Um, we've spent uh, $1,440.32 uh, for, for 12 months with our source on that. And then outside of, you know, some targeted lawn mowing and whatnot, uh, there really isn't any, any other general expense to the facility other than that. Um, you know, being an old structure, keeping the heat as low as possible and the AC off or uh, turning it on when it's perhaps extremely hot, the types of materials and the, the age of the building will obviously degrade as time goes on. So that kind of speaks to the urgency of the project being now, but, um, you know, because we just don't know how much it will change with um, the types of climate changes you have in a facility of that age. So. Uh, the new updated numbers brings the building to about 3.5 million. Again, going with a conceptual plan of making it available to the way that it once was be before we closed it. Um, as you already have uh, announced a couple of times this, this meeting, we're going to have a meeting on October 14th to now get a lot of community feedback on that. And then there'll be some more public outreach from there as well, uh, depending on what we learn on that date. And um, you know, revise plans if necessary, scale them back, increase them, depending on what we learn. And that's about it. Okay. Anything for the staff? Uh, so just if the board could clarify, uh, you'd like me to update the cost to reflect three to four million as opposed to one to two, and that you are all set with priority one. Yep, I would uh, say that we need to update those numbers. Be as close to what we information that we have at the time of the uh, CIP. Okay. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll go through the board. Ted. Dave, you had electrical numbers, but do you have heating numbers as well for the past year or no? Not right now. Well, as far as, far as um, I did not get the gas for the for the heating system itself but it's a forced hot air so a lot of it is electric as well but oh okay yeah i can get the gas numbers too right okay but it's it's probably minimal <clears throat> true true although you don't want the pipes bursting. well to be clear yeah it's not on town water it's a well i had the building winterized before last winter so that to take away the threat of frozen bursting pipes oh, and good. things of that nature the toilets are off everything's drained in the building so oh, wonderful okay yeah because we didn't we didn't want to experience that i mean that's that was one of my concerns also, you know, the age of the HVAC, you know, if it, if the heating system goes, uh, it, it'd be painful to have to make an expensive repair to a heating system in a building that's, that's vacant. Right. So. And I think um, you had made good commentary on Monday night last night, well, no, sorry, two nights ago, um, that really this building cannot be used right now for the public as it is not handicapped accessible right. in any ways or sorts 
and for us to be able to make it handicapped accessible, there will be a good deal of cost into that. Um, and certainly the, the numbers that you had provided from our um, third party group, uh, I think really show what those costs would be. And I think it's, you can't really just make it just handicapped accessible without doing some of the other parts that really need to happen for the building. So. Yeah, I, and, and you know, just like the school district just illustrated as well, I mean, things change in shorter span times than, than this. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, uh, Dave Ellis provided me with some, some great historical background and references on the building uh, today, uh, forwarded through Cheerson's office, and I appreciate that very much. And, you know, the, the town was at a crossroads in 1976 when they were deciding whether or not to demolish the building or what to do with it when they were uh, no longer going to uh, use it as a town hall. And um, that's when the Lions took it over. Uh, and since that time, obviously codes and, and, and spatial needs and size of bathrooms and ADA compliance have all changed. So uh, to try and fit the building into today's standards is a challenge, to say the least. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Uh, I was also just going to say I, I did like the plan that you had presented, I thought, uh, between you and the architects and designers. I thought it was an interesting plan and idea for the building moving forward. Um, we'll see how the commentary comes out from the public. Thank you. Tony. So um, I had asked you last time, um, it, it's, it's expensive to build a municipal building. Mm -hmm. It's expensive to retrofit a building to make it <coughs> municipal because of all the codes and whatnot. But when I asked you last time, for this amount of square feet, retrofitted, done, ready to go, the current building, is it still, are you still of the opinion it would cost more if we were going to do ground up? We looked at that and it's a great question. Um, it's probably comparable to a new building. Okay. Um, a new one is around $4 million, somewhere in that vicinity. You know, again, depending on, you know, taking some general assumptions of what we're going to do with the facility. Right, and part of the issue that you have is no one's told you yet what they want to use it for. And that's Correct. really hard to design a building. It, it, it has been a challenge, to say the pretty least. Pretty much impossible, actually. Yeah, we, we, we make some generalizations, and that's why we, we took the task at hand with the approach of what was it being, what purpose was it being used when it closed. And so um, that was the intent around that. Now, whether if we think those services are valuable to the community, if we think that the town shouldn't be in the business of offering those services where they were being offered by the Lions, uh, that's answers that have to come from the community at large. Thank you. Okay, Johnny. Um, I'll pass. <clears throat> yeah, I think um, the only comments I have is, you know, you know, this juncture, London area owns that property, owns the building, it's something that you know needs to be maintained. I, the town is at another crossroads, um, so looking forward to you know the direction of where that's kind of going. But you know, from purposes of um, placing it on this advisory document, um, you know, I think it definitely kind of it makes sense to you know, keep it keep it that way, just for the you know the pure fact that we own it. It's you know, I look at it as a risk um, because of its use of because of its age and um, and other kind of aspects. It needs to there needs to be some type of maintenance there, and you know, I you know, trust that the numbers that that have been provided presented you know are as accurate as you can get without any clear direction on where to go. So I actually commend you for that. That's that's an incredibly difficult thing to do, um, but you know, definitely from you know the sense of just having it on this document and you know potentially reducing the risk I think it you know it it has to s you know, stay at a definitely as a one priority for the town to continue discussions and continue to where it's kind of going so that's all I have to say Mr. Chair thank you thank you uh, Lynn. <clears throat> so just a, a couple of things Dave uh, number one Kelly I think we do need to update where everybody we do need to update the dollar figure based on the numbers that they presented Monday night <clears throat> but um it's a uh, priority one 
I, I'm not going to debate uh, priority one versus two, but I think uh, if it's a priority one, I'm looking at the verbiage on page eight, I think we should assign a, a, a date that we want to see this project take off. Right now the date is TBD, and I think FY 2024 is probably where we want it. I think for a priority one project we can add that clarity. And then my other comment is on the funding source. <clears throat> How do you see or what's the expectation of the primary source of funding for this? Is it going to be a Warren article <clears throat> in a bond? Because, Great. and I asked the question, uh, yeah. I'm not asking the question, to, to, I'm the, asking it just in terms of the priority for funding sources that are in the verbiage. <clears throat> the number one thing listed is donation, bequest, private. The last thing is a bond. I, I think it's flipped. I think we should put what we see as the priorities or as the, the what we forecast as the prior or the primary funding mechanisms. Put those first and then put the other ones down after that. Yeah. Um, excellent question in regards to financing, obviously, how are we going to pay for it? Um, we didn't really, again, back when I was filling out the form in May and June, um, <coughs> not even knowing really kind of an exact dollar amount. Um, financing really still hasn't even been something that has been really discussed as we just got the numbers now. But uh, there is a variety of ways. I think you're right. The prim primary source will be a bond. Um, you know, for duration, I don't, I don't know uh, to what extent, you know. And uh, there are some um, grants that can be sought out as well. Uh, there's a new one that we just learned of, and we're still diving into that a little bit. And there's others that we potentially could go after, but not, that won't be a major chunk out of the three and a half million yep. um, but nonetheless it's probably a bonding source and uh, perhaps others so I just think for the format of the uh, CIP that that should be listed first uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to last under the funding sources yeah and the you're you're absolutely right about the um, the placement in the CIP again back in May and June we didn't know that and then uh, as things evolved and then even the the council even acknowledged that they were um, potentially bringing forward this for the March vote so um, so I think that is because of the priority in, in the age of the building is that's where it's slated and I'd like to see the, yep. <clears throat> the, the CIP updated just to reflect that it, my yes, it, 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 it will be okay yeah. okay great and, and I think if we go change your priorities uh, I think it really doesn't have any significance because the town council will set their own priorities the school board will set their own priorities you know this is a uh, advisory document so at, at this point I don't think it's worth uh, worthwhile arguing about uh, about that I think uh, we'll proceed anyway yeah all set Jake I'm good I thought you had a great presentation the other night thank you thank you Roger I have one question <clears throat> we said that the amount of renovating this building equaled the same approximate of building a new building what would the cost of maintenance between those two for the upcoming 50 years? Or um, and I'm, I'm glad you brought, kind of circled back to what Tony was driving at too, uh, on a new facility and whatnot. The thing though that you, that makes this project unique is that, uh, is the history. And so that has an intrinsic value to the community. And so if we didn't have the building, we just had the lot, you know, would we be, again, understanding the challenges that the community is facing with education, infrastructure, and other, you know, competing interests, would we be talking about this? Nope. Highly unlikely. Um, but due to the age of the facility and the history and the value that we have with it and the emotional connections and ties to it that a, a great deal of this community has <coughs> to that building, um, we find ourselves in kind of some uncharted waters as to again, what do we value in the community of Londonderry? And so um, what can we envision there? And so could we envision a brand new modern facility there across the street from the common with the church settings? And I, I, I don't think that anybody can envision that. So yes, we can compare you know, an apple to a watermelon if we want, but I don't think that it really makes much sense because a, a new facility is really not something that we would be debating here today if it were not for it being the Reverend Morrison Meeting House, uh, a.k.a. Town Hall, a.k.a. Lions Hall. Um, I, I, I did try to... Uh, <laughs> never. <laughs> I will say never on that one. Um, 
I, I did, you know, solicit to get some uh, general ideas of, you know, if we are a year round facility, uh, as is, if you will, again, understanding that the some of the parking area may shrink or actually increase a little bit, but green space and what have you not. For landscaping annually, we're looking at about $5,900 uh, as far as cutting grass, fall cleanups, spring cleanups, fertilization, and things like that. And then winter season, you know, you could be eight to eight to nine thousand dollars contracted services in that regard. To try to um, gauge what will your heating and, and energy costs, we can derive that if we get to the next level. If we get into a, a final design of the facility, we can make some assumptions on, you know, what our our factors will be in the walls after renovation and things like that of a facility of that age. Uh, it's easy to do on a new facility, uh, but on a, on a facility that you got to make some generalized assumptions, and then again, hours of operation, uh, how many weekends is it going to be utilized or rented? You know, are there going to be a lot of meetings in there at night? Uh, you know, it, 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 it's tough to to come up with that. I I did have an old spreadsheet from the from the Lions previously on kind of what where their expenses were, and uh, it's it's not even detailed enough to really kind of understand what we might be looking at. Um, but certainly not to the expense of a, a town hall or, or something that I've met of that nature. But I had some experience with the uh, historical society and the building that they're trying to build. Mm -hmm. And it's been a long time because it is very expensive. Yes. But it's also extremely expensive to keep up the buildings they already have there. Mm -hmm. And that, that was my question. Are we going to end up with something that's going to be really expensive to continue on. Yeah, I, it, it, you know, a lot of these renovations, you know, we are, are not touching the roof because it's been, you know, within the last 10 years that it's been done. The siding has been on for how many years, and it appears to be in great condition. Um, there's a couple things that will have to be addressed, but it's a, it's a pretty good well overall of that, of that building, similar to, you know, the senior center and kind of what they did down there. Um, and we really haven't experienced any extensive, you know, oh my God problems. And that's an old building itself. It has a modern addition onto it, but a lot of it is original. Um, crawling around underneath down there is 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 interesting. Um, <laughs> and it's and it's and it's holding up well. And you know, I tend to think that this facility may see that similar type of foot traffic. Perhaps maybe even a little bit more, um, but but this renovation is a little bit uh, grander than than what was done there, and you know we're going to try to um, preserve or bring back some of the original luster and glamour of the of the building too. And one of the things that we've been uh, kicking the can around about is you know after the, the the public input meeting is perhaps try to have an open house there if we will. We need to think that through a little bit. We want to check with our insurance company just to. You know, to what extent is it okay to let people in the building yeah, for that? The yeah, building. we say it's not it's not handicap accessible, and then somebody shows up with a wheelchair, and it's uh, you, maybe maybe you get to sign a waiver or something before you come in, uh, enter at own risk and stuff like that. But I I I I think I I think that's an important venture, and and here's why, because you know, a lot of people love the building and know the building very well. Uh, very intimately and there's a lot of people that have driven by that building probably 3,000 times in the time they lived in town and don't even know it's a town building mm -hmm. so um, I think it's important to get people inside because we're talking about it as if it's 250 year old rundown dilapidated beat down barn and it's not and when you're inside it, it it's amazingly quiet um, you, you 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 feel the presence of, of being back in time um, the, the, it's got the unique creakness and uh, the, the calmness, uh, some of the materials, the ceilings. It was quite fascinating how I, I got up above the suspended ceiling. I didn't, didn't know I can contort my spine like that, but we did, and, <laughs> and, and got some neat pictures, uh, and, and that was very exciting to see that. Um, you know, and I just think that if we can put people in there and, and they kind of understand that you know, this is doable, uh, and this could be very exciting. And, 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 and getting back to the, to the kids, I mean, some of the, uh, you know, the real excitement and seeing the, what's going on with the recreation department, it's become more robust and, al and, 
and uh, Art has, you know, advocated for, for recreation for, for years, and, and, and he's excited. And they're doing new things. Recreation just isn't about throwing a ball around or, or you know, tackling somebody or whatever. But um, there's a lot of excited things that could be potentially interesting to kids, nature walks and getting more use of the, of the Kent Allen Forest and the stage across the street or the stage in the building, uh, in, in just arts and crafts and, and things like that that, that are important to a community, and that's kind of, you know, um, so when you, if you can put people in there and kind of let them see, see the vision, feel it, um, know that the building's not old and musty and stinky and there's, you know, mice running all over the place and, and things like that, I think it would be important to, to try to at least let people see it so, and see what their, their money would, would possibly be potentially put towards. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Jason. Um, Last think, one. <laughs> I think one thing to, we'll go to the public. That, that, that's yes, important to, um, to communicate is that this isn't a, like a, a, a build, you know, renovate or leave. Like this is renovate or tear down, basically, right? Well, I, 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 Renovate. I don't know that that's for me to answer. I, I think that's. Or wait and I, then tear down. I, I, think, well, well, I think that's for the, the community to decide. I, I no, really but what, what I'm saying is, like, there's going to be a cost. I, well, if, if we don't use it, eventually we'll, the, there will be a cost associated with the it. The crossroads decision will become more and more evident as to which direction you're going to have to go. Yeah. I think right now we're, we're, we're positioned <laughs> to, to be able to make a, a thoughtful, educated decision on what we're doing. Um, but. Like I said at the beginning, you know, a building of this age, uh, unoccupied, with minimal, you know, heat and air conditioning and maintenance, um, can any building will will degrade over time if you walk away from it. Right. Um, and so, and understanding that construction costs, as the school board of, now they're updating their numbers, and if we take a pass for another year, I'm sure I might be back in front of you saying, well, we're at 3.7 now. And, and now we get to a point where, you know, we've gone down the road a few more years and we're finding more problems and there's more sagging of the floor, which is now pulling on the walls or creating other issues that weren't once there. Okay. The costs become out, out of reach uh, to the point that, you know, the, the decision gets made for us that we know where we're going in those crossroads because it's just not attainable anymore. Yeah, that, that's what I was trying to say is that it's not like it's a building in use and we just want to fix it up. Like. Correct. If we don't do this, then it doesn't get used and it sits there for another voting cycle. And eventually, like, there is a cost associated with not doing something. Correct. You know? So, yeah. I think and the vote in, it, in, a, in and of itself will kind of dictate how people feel about the. Yeah. To me, that would tell me if it got voted down that their people don't see the historical value in it. I'd be looking to tear it down after that. Or they don't desire the, the types of services yeah. or, or potential yeah. use of the space as, as something that the, that the town of Londonderry should, should be doing. It, it, it'll tell you <coughs> clearly, you know, no, we, we, don't, we don't want the additional rec services. We don't, we don't want, uh, you know, a place that we could, you know, 5013C place, you know, people could go and have meetings or fundraisers. We, we don't want to. Uh, have a place affordable for someone to have a bridal shower or a baby shower or, or, or whatever you may, we, you may envision um, that the community says they want to do with, with the hall space or, um, you know, if that's something that the taxpayers decide that that's not illustrative of what Londonderry is, then, then we'll know exactly what to do with the building. Dave, one, I would definitely other, yeah. suggest that you do a virtual tour, uh, cooperate with the crew from the Access Center. Mm -hmm. Do a walkthrough, have them video everything and narrate it just like you did. And that way, you know, you don't have to have all the public going in there and everything. Yeah. That's a great idea. It's a great suggestion, Al. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I do. I, I think that's great. I just also think being yeah. in the space is, is uh, you know, we, we've got to work through that, but I think we can, I think we can get there. Well, um, but even still, it maybe perhaps that day we, we have the, the crew there. Well, the way we you just it. described it emotionally about being in there, that's what people need to see, and they can right. see that on yeah. video. One, one other question. So the town, own, and correct me if I'm wrong, the town owns the orchard, the land for the orchard behind there, right? Or is it just the you – know, okay, so they just bought the stuff on the, the land on the other yeah. side, right? It's okay. Because right. yeah. I was thinking that would Green be a nice side. connection between – well, so to your point, Jason, um, and in, in the conceptuals too that you look, uh, I think they did a good jo a good job at rendering. We're, we're we're trying to 
create some connectivity to the common. Um, I think that's key in, in a renovation of, of this nature um, because we are trying to, you know, bring back some of the, the importance of the building and, and, and the historical value of it. So um, it, it would make a very nice connectivity from that through the churches, through the Grange, you know, up to the town uh, hall and campus area, the school district. It, it's, it's starting to, you know, bring together that sense of community uh, <coughs> of, uh, of, a, of a, maybe not a downtown feel, but, but, but this is the heart of, of Londonderry and what a fine representative of an illustration that would be, you know, coming up and perhaps people wouldn't drive right by it th at three, you know, 3,000 times without even noticing. They would be like, wow, what's that? That, that that's interesting, you know, Londonderry Community Center or not the Dave Wally Center, the, the London Dairy Center, <laughs> whatever it's going to be. We'll have a naming contest. Maybe we can have a sponsor pay to name it, the, and the, that'll the be a new, fundraising opportunity. The I New don't Balance know, but, Community Center. Yeah, but uh, this, this, yeah, we, yeah. We, we, there's some good ideas, but um, Reverend yeah. Reverend Morrison's meeting house. The connectivity is, 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 is important in, in, in this type of venture. Mr. That, Chair. Mr. Chair, I would love to hear from the public. Uh, I would, too. Uh, <laughs> are, are there any uh, members of the public that have any <clears> questions, <throat> comments, concerns? About both uh, the uh, the town side, the town issue, and of the school projects. <laughs> I think it's rather silent out there. Uh, Mr. Chair, I just had one but, uh, last question. Uh, for I'll, I'll bring it back. Uh, I'll close the hearing and I'll bring it back for the board for uh, <coughs> deliberation and discussion. So. I just had one last question for Mr. Wally. Uh, I just want to be, I guess, a bit of devil's advocate. You've had many conversations with our third party on designing all this and coming up with the pricing. How do you feel and they feel how accurate the pricing really is or do we think that there may be any unknowns that could increase this pricing? Um, outside of soft costs and designing money and things like that, we really haven't ca captured that yet. Um, but there's there's room for improvement. We, we did scale numbers down. Mm -hmm. um, we, once we you know, had the good visuals and we got the layout the best way that we think serves the building um, to meet the, the necessary requirements, the bathrooms and the, and the chairlift was a challenge to oh, say yes, the least of because the, the front part of the building is much smaller than, than you realize and the left side was really unavailable because mm -hmm. that footprint in the vault needs to stay as is. Yes. Um, so the really only new difference there is that that would be an office space. Um, but, um, but we're not anticipating maybe seeing this price go up from 3.5. No, so more it, than that between now and it, it, March. In fact, quite the opposite. There's there there is a scaling down of the facility dependent upon what we hear from the community. Mm -hmm. um, where the kitchen uh, was probably the biggest question mark, because we only put a kitchen there because there already is a kitchen in the facility. Again, just trying to keep apples to apples comparison. But we didn't really size it or fit it with any real general understanding as to what would go on in it. Um, we made some general assumptions that we're probably not going to do a, fi a, a hood and, and get into that type of thing because we don't really see meal preparation going in there. Unless if we wanted to partner differently with a Meals on Wheels organization, but we already have that going on at the senior center and that, that assists them and other needs that they have there too. So that's kind of out the window. But we don't really see that wanting to be some kind of gourmet kitchen back there. But the size uh, was a little larger because we were trying to capture some additional storage mm -hmm. um, on the back side of the building. And with the understanding that with the pavilion there and the useful purpose of that um, and not wanting to have to necessarily, we wanted to have a little bit of separation so that if there was a birthday party going on in the pavilion, they have a b bathroom accessible from the outside. <coughs> Um, the building wouldn't need to be open. They wouldn't need to enter the facility, or perhaps there may even be something going on in the facility that they they, did, they needed some separation. But that back wall could be shrunk, so we could scale the kitchen down. We could lose one bathroom if we had to, depending on what we hear, uh, and, the, and the square footage of the storage could go away as well. We were um, potentially thinking of, with some of the storage, you know, the, the golf carts that we have, we don't really have a set place to store them. They're kind of over here, and they're across the street and we kind of thought that would make a make more sense to store them there so but there's there's the ability to scale the scale the project down a little bit mm -hmm. um, but we feel pretty comfortable knowing um, 
the generalized numbers that we see in the commercial industry, which is changes daily, it's hard. Um, but we, we feel pretty pretty sol solidly confident in those numbers. Wonderful, thank you. You're Mr. Welcome. Chair, bear with me here, but I'd like to make a motion. Can we make a motion? I'm looking for a motion, so. I'd, uh, like, uh, I'd <laughs> like to make a motion to adopt the fiscal year 2025 to 2030 CIP worksheet with uh, the following amendments to um, show that Moose Hill 1A and 1B are combined with the appropriate cost and the scoring from the 1A as well as an updated um, pricing on the Lions, How Lions Hall project to be three to four million. Second. Okay, I have a motion uh, for the planning board to adopt as amended. Do you have all that, Kelly? And to include the Lions Hall in fiscal year 2024? Yes. Yes, correct. Thought Thank I heard you. you say it. Yes. <laughs> got it. Okay, we've got everything. So uh, <coughs> Jake made the motion, Al did the seconding. Any further discussion by the board? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. That's just sure it's affirmative. And we have a uh, CIP plan for. Uh, 2025 to 2030. Fantastic. <laughs> and those copies will be distributed to the school board, the town council, and the budget committee. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay, I have a motion to adjourn and a second. Uh, and next week we have uh, 5.30. It's pizza time. <laughs> okay, aye. all those in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.